All right, uh, first and foremost, we give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Most High God, Yahweh. The name is on the begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Um, we're here tonight, as usual, every Friday we do the Friday night class. Um, this Friday, though, uh, this week, we got a, a, a special guest on, and we're going to discuss uh, Esau and the identity of Esau in the Bible, the biblical Edomites, and who they are today and whatnot. We're going to discuss um, with the brother Nasi. Um, many of y'all probably know him, I assume, if y'all don't know him, um, you may be at least familiar with his face. Um, he had a, a, a pretty a pretty viral video that went on Facebook where a so-called white woman had a, a falsely accused him of trying to rape her just because he was wondering why she was taking photographs of him. That was a, that was a pretty uh, you know pretty pretty impactful video that went all over the um, all over the Facebook world. So um, if if y'all don't know him by name, y'all should know him by face at at, at this juncture. Um, but the brother um, took some time out of his night tonight uh, to to. Uh, you know, have this inter in interface with this dialogue, um, you know, and uh, namely the brother Deacon Nakago, he wants to uh, ask him some questions in regards to, you know, the belief of, you know, who Esau is. Of course, we stand on that Esau is a so-called white man. Um, he uh, believes that they are the Arabs. Esau is the Arab. So um, as we see, the, the, those are, you know, conflicting ideologies. So we kind of just want to get to the bottom of, you know, what one of us may or may not be understanding about who's who, and maybe we can come to a more educated conclusion through the spirit of the Most High. Um, with that being said, I'm going to open it up now uh, to, um, matter of fact, here's what we're going to need to do. We're going to have to unplug that. You see what I'm saying? Cause it, just listen closer. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's okay. going to be too loud, you know All what right. I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, okay, that's perfect. All right, so what we're going to do is now, I'm going to make sure to open this brother's mic up, and what we are going to do is um um at the beginning of dialogue this grand probably how about some y'all shot so but uh go ahead take it away uh deacon con hey brother nazi is that what you would like me to call you for the duration of this uh dialogue oh wait he's muted like nah, uh, so like, oh, he, he might have himself muted no hold on my bad my fault i still got you muted hold on i'm not unmuted muted you got yourself muted? Oh, man. Yeah, we can't we can't hear you. One second. Mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check. You, unmuted now. you good now? Yeah, mic check, mic check. Oh, what's wrong with you? Go ahead, say it one more time, brother. Mic check, mic check. There we go, there we go. Boom. Yeah, I was I was asking you want me to just refer to you by brother Nazi or do you go by anything else? <laughs> It's cool, no problem. Okay. Um, the first the first question I wanted to know <coughs> or ask you is um what is your what is your interpretation of Genesis chapter 25 um and verse verse 25? I'll just read it for you. It says, and the first came out red all over like in hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Well, my take on that scripture in Genesis chapter 25, verse 25, is that we have to deal with the Hebrew word for red. Um, this is where a lot of the, the confusion comes from, is with the English word red, and people run with it. But when we deal with the Hebrew red, we clearly see that it's Adawam, you know what I'm saying? Or you know what I'm saying? Which we can tie this also into Adam. Definition deal with the um the concordance or anything that's dealing with the Hebrew. We clearly see that Adam also means red as well. And also when we deal with the book of um one moment, uh first Samuel. I'm gonna go to first Samuel. When we deal with King David, King David was called ready, and the same definition in the Hebrew ready is exactly red as well so we have so a lot of people speak and say that um in genesis 25 25 it's referring to red as in a white man but they're not they're not referring to uh king david being called red they're not referring to the book of numbers when it's tougher the red heifer being red they're not talking about any of this stuff either and when you look up a red heifer you clearly see it's a, a reddish brownish a reddish brownish uh cow and when we deal with Adawam, he was created from the dust of the ground, meaning different shades of, 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 of reddish brown. You know what I'm saying? So Adawam, Adam was red, 
Esau was red, King David was red, and also um, King Solomon was called ready as red as well. And we also see a red he uh, heifer in uh, Numbers, in, in the book of Numbers as well, Numbers uh, 19. So we have red all through the Bible. All right, let me see. Numbers chapter 19, verse 2. This is the ordinance of the law, which Yahuwah have commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, red no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. So we clearly see the red here. And then up the definition in the Hebrew of red, it's the same exact red that we have for you as well. All right, uh, first Samuel. Black, uh, let's see, uh, 17, 15, 42. Nope, uh, 32. One moment while I get the scripture. All right, so first Samuel 17 42. All right, so the book of first Samuel, chapter 17, verse 42, it says, And when the Philistine looked about and saw David and di disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And we've been this red definition for red as the same definition and meaning in the Hebrew for as Esau as well. Uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10, about uh, King David. I mean, yeah, uh, King Solomon. All right. So, Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10, it says, My beloved is white and ruddy, chiefest among 10,000. So, when we go into this word of ruddy again, we clearly see this is red. King David was called red as well, and he was called white and ruddy, but we know what white is referring to. So, I break down the death. Definition and show you that many, many people noticed as red skinned people. You know what I'm saying? So, this does not mean white, but I'm going to show you a few scriptures. All right. Well, my response to that would be uh, we have to deal with context. How many different Hebrew words appear for the color red in the Bible? Can you hear me? I can I can hear you a little better now. You was breaking up. So like it. So my question is, how many different colors for red are no words for the color red appear in the Bible, in the Hebrew? Explain. Well, there's only one word for red that appears in the biblical Hebrew. So with that being said, how do we differentiate what red is talking about if there's over 50 shades of red? context right well, that, that's well how we could dis uh, differentiate on that is basically the uh, uh, strongs and that's why i was showing you so i'm gonna put this to the screen this is um this is the blue letter by i swore strongs and it's gonna basically show you that blood that red actually means a dom to show blood in face flush turn nosy red die but it actually shows you that it means ready so i'm gonna show you real quick if, if people but, can see uh, it at the same time if it, if it describes oh, can I do red a screen share? Any way, if, if any time yeah we could do screen share but anytime the word red comes up in the bible that's the word that comes up there so you mean to tell me every single time the color red is brought up in the bible it means a brownish red i'm showing you according to i'm telling you according to esau that red according to esau and ready no, that no, i no, broke no, down no, no. actually means the same meanings so wait a minute so you can just say that and you can make that definitively Though there are 50 shades of red, yet one word for red in the Hebrew, you can tell me definitively, based upon the context, that that's exactly what that means. No, I can show you, I can show you based upon precepts that Esau no, was, now, was, see, was now, the black man. Now, here's the thing, though. Period. Precepts, we have to stay in the context of the scripture. Can somebody read that for me in Genesis, please? I'm going to show you according to the context of the scripture uh, in Genesis, first and foremost. That your interpretation of Genesis is grossly incorrect. We're going to show that right now. Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. Read. 
And the first came out red. The first came out red. Read now the context. Because if there's one word for red in Hebrew, yet 50 shades of red, over 50 shades of red, then the context of what it says is going to tell you what shade of red it is. Go ahead. All over. All like, over. Like what? Like an hairy garment. Like an hairy garment. This begins to give us the clarification on the shade of red that they are utilizing to describe this newborn child. It says red all over like a hairy garment. Let's take a look at the first time in the Torah that an hairy garment is referenced after that time. Give me that in the book of Exodus 26 and 14, please. Exodus 26 and 14. Uh-huh. And thou shalt make a covering. A covering, read. For the tint of ram skin. Of ram skin. So this is the skin, read. Dyed red. That's the hairy garment dyed red, right? So what does that look like? Here's a picture of the recreation of that, right? That color red. Because now we have to go into the history. What was it dyed with? It was dyed with something called Kermes dye. Kermes dye was made of the blood of worms found on trees in the Mediterranean. That shade of red is the color that that dye was. So when it tells you red all over, like a hairy garment, when it gives you that context, and you take a look at the hairy garment that was in reference to, the only hairy garment that's referenced that's dyed red in the whole Bible, you see a shade of red that is consistent with the color of a Caucasian child when it comes out of the womb. So no, that's incorrect, but we can we can move on from that, or unless you want to respond. Okay, to hold on, hold on, but I, I want to rebuttal on that. So go what ahead, is the definition... Ahead. So what is the Hebrew definition for for Adam? How did, what what does what does what is the Hebrew meaning and See, the Hebrew uh, name uh, again, for Adam again, in Hebrew? Uh, again, what you're doing is playing the game because, like I said, I said context. We know that the Hebrew definition asking, has to do with I, blood. Brother, you, you it has to do with blood, and it can be. We're gonna ask it questions. Can, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, hold on. No, I, I am I am dialoguing, but the thing is, what you just asked. No, you're me not. You're not answering my said. question. You're not answering my question. Ask the question. So my question to you is this now adam what is the definition adam in the hebrew you can say a, 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 a ruddy brown okay so when we look up the definition for adam which is adam in the hebrew this clearly means red and now once again if we can screen share i can show this and prove it to you so no, now I, adam I, was called red as well I, I don't deny it okay so my, my thing is this adam was called red as well King David was called ruddy, which is red as well. King ruddy, which is red as well. So if we're going to use that logic, then you would have to explain about Adam or Adam being red as well. Explain every child that came out from birth, whether you whether you are black or you have a lighter complexion, they come out red, brother. Now and also say Esau came out hairy all over as well. So my question to you is this: You're telling me. You can show proof of a white baby today coming out with hair all over him. Now, number one, see, again, I, it, it shows that you're not paying attention to what I just said. What I just said, your whole first and initial point was knocked out the part with what I just said because I said the context in which the, the color is being described of Esau contextualize it as that of a hairy garment. I then showed you a hairy garment in the scriptures and the color of it that it was and the dye that was utilized to do it, a blood red. That's according to the context of it. That's what differentiates Esau from all those other people. When it brings up David, when he brings up Solomon, when it brings up Adam, did it say red all over like a hairy garment in any of those instances? No, it didn't. And then you allege that Esau was born Harry all over. Where is that in Genesis 25? I challenge you to produce that proof to me right now. Let's go to Genesis 25. Genesis chapter 25. Verse 25. And the first came out, first came out red all over like in hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Now, my question to you is this, because I'm going to explain this. When, when it was going on with uh, other people, when his brother became older, put on this, on, on his um, hand, bother. Hold on, hold on. You, you kind of cut out. So, ask the question. I just... You stopped at like hand. So if I you said, re well, restate your question. I said, 
Now, Jacob, right? Jacob loved Jacob loved Esau because of the red pottage, right? Now, Jacob became came Jacob became older and became blind a little bit. But Isaac, Jacob, Isaac. Uh, 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 huh? Uh, you said Jacob, Isaac. No, nah, not nah, I mean my bad, Isaac. Isaac became Yo. older and a bit, and Jacob tricked him and hair on him, right? Yes, sir. So Esau was hairy man. Clearly showing you. Yeah, this. I, I don't deny that Esau was hairy. But it just to be born hairy. Brother, no matter where you go with this, I'm going to prove you that Esau was a black man, a black nation. That, that, sure, let, let's continue. More precepts. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was that that's that was it on that question. We'll move on to the next question. Um, who are the who are the Ishmaelites today? Who are the Ishmaelites? Yeah. The Ishmaelites are over in Saudi Arabia. You the have Ishmaelites are in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Say that again. You have a sec of them. You have a sec of Arabia. All over within the landmass, Ishmael. They're all over in there, and they're a black. They're a black nation as well. Absolutely, the original, the original Ishmaelites were were dark skinned people. Okay, um, and they're in Saudi Arabia. Absolutely, they're all over in Mecca, scattered through there. Absolutely, thus saith the Bible. Is the original Arab? Is the original Arab uh, the Edomites? Or did or did the, the Edomites just take Edomites? over that land? <clears throat> no, they are mixed people. All so the, the Arabs, Arab. all the all them people over there that you see over there within that land, they are all mixed people. They mixed in together. That's what Arabs so, mean. Arabs means to mix. Okay, kind of, kind of, kind. I agree. I agree. Uh, I agree as far as what the word Arab means. Um, <clears throat> when did what what about the lighter arabs the arabs that look damn near white are they edomites yep they because they all mixed in with each other so who can't who how did how did they get that lighter color they all mixed in with each other let's get it out the book let's go to genesis chapter 28 Verse 9. Then when Esau Ishmael and took wives of wives, which he had Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. Precept. Genesis 36 and 1. 36 verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughter of Canaan. These are black nations, by the way, of Canaan, Adab, the daughter of Elam, the Hitchite, and Ahalabumah, the daughter of Anah, the daughter of Zibion, the Hitchite, and Bashamath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebajah. So we clearly see that Esau, which is a, a black nations amongst this time. So according to your logic, you're telling me that this white man right here went over to this black nation. The Canaanites people, all these people right here, and mixed himself with them and turned these whole nation white people. This is what you're saying according to your life. Ishmael and Esau mixing with each other. Now I'm about to show you in Jeremiah chapter 23 what what basically what it means. Showing you they're mixed people. Um chapter 25, verse 23. It says Dedan and Tima and Buzz. And all that are in the utmost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert. So we clearly see themselves with Moab, these people that's over there in the desert.
Okay, Con, Con, Con. Um, beautiful, beautiful. That was good. That was good. Uh, we believe that they 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 mixed a lot, but um, the question that I really wanted to know is if the, the Arabs are Edomites, Esau, and the white man is, to your understanding, Japheth, right? Absolutely, most of does have the Bible. Yep. So what I wanted to know was when did Japheth when did Esau mix with Japheth to make them become uh, lighter, uh, lighter people? Um, I didn't say Esau mixed with Japheth. What? Well, how else did they get lightened up then? Unless they mixed with Japheth. Because you had e you had Ishmael, Esau. They all mixed and mingled over there. A mix and with, mingled with Japheth people. though. With Japheth, right? No, you would have to show me that. What I'm saying, if Japheth, if 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 Esau and the Arab is black, you said it. They're, these are black nations, right? Then how is it Absolutely. that, like for example, right? If somebody wants to uh, uh, play a game on me, they're gonna tell me what I look like an Arab, right? I'm sure. I'm sure that's not an illogical thing for somebody to say, right? So how is it now? I know how I look. Got to look like this, right? So how is it that they get to look like this and even lighter unless they came and mingled they see with who you call Japheth? That's who Esau is. Esau's over there, and they mix and mingle with Ishmael, and they're all sitting over there to the way. The Saudi Empire, all these. For the, Esau, uh, well, Ishmael still they amongst them. They the just question. don't. If they're all black, when would when did they get lightened up? Real quick, because uh, real quick, let me interject because you said you're going to prove that Esau is a black nation. You just said that when we were dialoguing about Genesis 25. You said Esau was a black man, and Edomites are a black nation. Now we know that you and you say they're Arabs. We know them Arabs look like damn near Europeans. Some of them. Now we just want to know when Japheth went in there and spread his seed. Is there any historical, uh, biblical account that's cohesive I never with history? Said that they're Japheth. Vice versa? Huh? I never said that they're Japheth. You're saying that? No, yo, no. But the thing is, you're telling us that these are black people. That some of those people, a considerable amount of those people. Or have gotten far away from their Negroid features and are far on the lighter hue and the color scale. That can only occur if they mixed with the people of that you call Japheth. So we're saying, where is the evidence in that the they mingle with them people in the Bible to substantiate that? Because if 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 there's no evidence of that occurring, then they must have been lighter by some other way. Exactly. But once again. I never said that they mixed with Japheth. I'm just showing you what thus said the Bible say. So showing how did you they get Esau light? mixed with Ishmael and showing you all of these people over there? And I, I have, I have watched many of your vi your videos, many of the camp vehicles vi videos, and many of you guys even say that those people, the lighter skin ones, are Ishmael. Y'all even say that. Now you're you're just you're just trying like no no let's, no, no let's no, come no. on let's go. Uh, no hold on now here's the thing I, I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm following your logic and asking you questions according to your belief. We're not talking about our belief. So you can't utilize that. The thing is, if you're saying that all these people are black people, why don't all of them look black? When did a considerable amount of them get lightened up? By what means? By what vehicle? Who came in and sowed their seed amongst them and changed the way that they look? I said, it's, I said Esau was a Esau was a black man, and he went in Genesis thirty six and one and mixed with all of those black nations that I mentioned. I can read it so again. So why are they like this? I I can read it. I don't know. No, no. Listen, I hear I what you're saying, but you that, they that mixed. doesn't explain. No, he don't know. He don't know. He just so so you don't know. I don't know. So, I, I'm showing you that they mixed. Okay. 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 That's so you one. so you don't know how all the Arabs are like. That's what you're saying. Exactly. I don't know how all of them. All I know okay. is a mixture over there. Okay, they all okay, mix with cool. each other, and I just showed it to you out the book. Okay, Conk, but I never cool, told you that these people. I never told you that these people were Japheth, though. Conk, Conk, it's all good. It's all good. We we're we're doing this. We're doing this for the audience, so we'll let them decipher uh, through through the diff, through our through our under what you the evidence you provide, and then the questions we answer. Whatever. We'll go to the next topic. We got we got a bunch of questions. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to bring out everything, all your understanding pertaining to these questions. <coughs> most good, most good. Uh, my, my next question would be, um, it, a blessing 
the blessing of Esau, where was it? 27? 27. Um, 27, the blessing of Esau. Uh, this is, this is going to be a two-part question. When it says uh, at the beginning of verse 40 in Genesis, 7, uh, so, so, like, Genesis 27 and 40, and by the sword thou shalt live, um, basically ruling by the sword. Uh, I'll, ask, I'll ask the other part of the question after you expound on that. What does ruling by the sword mean? What, what does that indicate in prophecy, and how are, how are the Arabs fulfilling that prophecy? Well, basically, that, that's that you just read in uh, Genesis or Barashi, uh chapter 40, is talking about a literal, a literal sword. It's not talking about no guns. It's not talking about the military. It's not talking about that. It's talking about the actual literal sword. And this is why when you, you clearly look at their flag, they got the swords on the flags. When you deal with Esau, you clearly see on the land, they behead people every single day. And even when you testament, you see, uh, what's my call it? That was, that was an Edomite. He was beheaded as well. I mean, they, they was beheading people as well. So we clearly see this stuff all through through scripture and we clearly see it through prophecy today. Nothing has changed. This is talking about the literal sword. So it's talking about the it's talking about the literal sword. So I want to understand how the Arabs could assert their influence through the planet Earth by the literal sword. You said the Arabs did what? How are they asserting their influence on the planet Earth through their literal sword? How they are swerted through the the planet Earth? How, it how say do they, that they assert, assert their? How do they assert the influence Earth? in the Earth and rule and live by their literal? I'm talking about their literal sword, not just people getting beheaded in the desert. I'm talking about how, on a global scale, what significance does their literal sword have? Well, it's not a. It's, we're not going to talk about a global scale because we got to stick to Esau's blessings, which that that was given to him, which is the land. And when we read Genesis chapter eight. We clearly see the land that he was given to him, which was Mecca. So we can't say the whole world. We're talking about where Esau is right now and what's happening over there on within the land and how Esau conducts himself and carry himself, which is by that sword. Okay. Um and and I mean th that's fine. That's fine. Um that's fine. Uh dealing with the the the, the latter part. Or the previous part of the blessing, when it says, uh, back in Genesis 27, um, verse 39, and it says, And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. What prophecy is this, and how does the Arab, how do the Arabs fulfill it? Okay, so first off, in uh, in Genesis chapter twenty-seven, verse twenty-five, it says, "And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee." And he brought it near to to him. He did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Verse twenty-six. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near me now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled, he smelled the smell, he smelled the smell of the raiment and blessed him and, and, and said, see, the smell of my son is the smell of a field which Yahuwah have blessed. Therefore, Elohim gave thee the dew of Shamayim and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. So we clearly see the fat actually referring to the oil. It's actually referring to the oil as to why this ties into Mystery Babylon, which is another story, but which ties as Mr. Mr. And it talks about the pitch, which is the oil that will be set up. So Esau, the fatness was actually the oil and the land mass that he's referring to is actually Mecca. Isaac, Isaac and um, Esau had the same blessing, but the difference between, I mean, Jacob, Jacob, but the difference between Jacob, his blessings was the whole entire earth and everlasting salvation, not Esau. Okay, that that's good that you that you mentioned that because um, if they have the same blessing and they both have the fatness, let me read uh, let me read uh, Jacob's blessing. 
This is a verse, verse 20, Genesis 27 and 28. Therefore, God give thee of, of the God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth, plenty and plenty of corn and wine. So how do you differentiate that the fatness of the earth is not talking about oil in the case of uh, Jacob's blessing? Because what, when you deal with the fatness of the earth, referring to Jacob, according to precept, that Jacob had a certain less certain land mass, which was the Mecca area. And so, uh, 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 by the by, the, by the Egypt, cutting off amongst Egypt and the Euphrates River and all, all this stuff, you clearly see what's going on. But then you also see the concordance or anything. This is referring to oil. So this is why you have to dig deep behind this stuff to 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 really see what it's talking about. Nah, but so where's Jacob's oil then? Because they both have the same blessing of the fatness of the earth. So where's Jacob's oil production? Why isn't Jacob producing oil? If, if Jacob's fact, fact, that's what it means. Right. And I just, and I explained it to you that Jacob's of the earth was actually for entire mm -hmm. land and entire land within the, within this, uh, the, uh, what, what, uh, Isaac gave to him, the entire land and all, all as covenant. He had more than Esau. So, uh, uh, it, it, with, with that being said, they both are blessed with, the, it says the literal same thing in, in both blessings. So why aren't both of them rich in oil? That's the question. They're not rich in oil. Only only Esau is the rich in oil. But That's no, it, it. Say, That's it why says I say, literally. Once, once again, like I've been providing you, I've been providing you, like when we was dealing with red, when we was dealing with red, red and ready and stuff, I provide definition of this stuff, but you choose not to go into the meaning of no, the no, Hebrew, no, which was original language, not, which nobody, was translated. Nobody didn't choose. I provided you precept example, then I provided you visual aid, and I provided you historical uh, information in regards to how they used to make dyes to dye things. So let's not play that game, number one. Number two, no. the reason why I'm isolating this instance is because literally the same blessing is given to Jacob and Esau. It says the literal same thing. But you are now deciding to say in one instance it means that. Then a few verses later it means something entirely different. These are why we're asking you these questions because that doesn't make sense. Explain to me why they both are not rich in oil production. I just explained to you, and that's why I say you have to go into the Hebrew for, for Esau, which is the fatness of the earth, and it clearly show you that it's the oil. Okay, okay, that's fine. So explain it now, to you but you're you not accepting my answer. No, no, no. Well, well, at the end of the day, we don't have to accept your answer. This is for the this is for the audience. So before I before I ask you uh the next question, I want to I want to show you some information. Um so Esau would basically be the the nation of people that prosper the most in oil production on the planet due to their blessing correct esau absolutely esau mecca yep they are the they are the major oil produ production on the face of the earth absolutely that's why you got america constantly going to war with them america setting up stuff to try to go over there to the afghanistan all of these arab countries because they know this is where the oil is and they know these it's like the oil capital of the world okay Ooh. all right so sure. we're going to provide this information and show you that who we think who we believe is the edomites have more oil than the arabs go ahead this is the map as we see it's got countries and it's got a color code from black to a lighter shade of blue if you notice yes saudi arabia is black but larger and both black are america and russia which are predominantly white countries who produce more more oil combined white people than the arab countries combined Th this is a fact so according to your own logic and what you believe proves that the edomites are arabs it actually proves that this is so-called white men absolutely not uh, I mean, it, this, is, this is the fact. Now, let's take a look. Saudi Arabia produces 10,625,000 barrels of oil per year, according to 2016 documents. Russia and United States combined white countries produced 19 million barrels of oil. So they're outproducing who you say is Esau. So they must be Esau, according to your logic. Once again, like I say, According to that logic that you just showed, 
it clearly goes against scripture it goes again no it, it doesn't go against scripture according to what listen we, you see the numbers 10 6 25 for saudi arabia look at russia just behind it 400 000, then you add america another white nation nearly nine million more barrels of oil white people produce more oil than arabs so they must be the edomites absolutely not because okay. well uh, okay. it is what it is the fact the facts are there so you know people can decide for themselves so before i move on to the next question my beloved do you believe that the numbers are cooked that the books are cooked and the numbers are cooked that these that these oil that the numbers are are, are pseudo per se okay so hold on before we move on to this next topic i want to show since he's showing his his references i want to show mine when we're dealing with when we're dealing with esau his fatness i want to show you what it says this is the concordance the hebrew word mishman 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 fatness fat piece fertile place richly prepared food fat fatness fat pieces oil and i'm gonna show it to the people so people can see it oil oil so now if you're denying the concordance the emotions away so no, when did we continue. ever deny it we never denied that it meant oil we we didn't deny it so i don't understand why you're acting I'm like we just showed you, you that we just showed you that say, european nations we just told you that caucasian nations produce more oil than arab nations so we agree with you and then we're showing you how what you believe and what you're using to prove who esau is is working against who you believe esau is and working towards what we're we're just going by your logic and showing you how your logic makes our point better than it makes yours that's all we're doing nobody denied i'm showing you this brother i'm showing you this brother this is what i'm saying okay you and, what, I, and what i'm saying is according to what okay. you're saying esau is the white man that's what i'm saying okay so this is what i'm saying you i'm gonna show you how to you know the semantics you play you set up here and ask me about jacob having the fatness of the earth of the land and then you also ask me about esau having the fatness of the land so this is what i'm showing you i'm showing you the fat of esau is it means oil that's what i'm showing you according to scripture and also hebrew text hebrew concordance i'm showing you what it means so I'm staying on topic. You took it somewhere else. I, I, nobody took it somewhere else. A, a, another question was was asked to you, just about that. You said it was oil. So based upon what you said it was, we went upon your logic, and then we found who has the most oil, and it happens to be so-called white people and not so-called Arabs. So according to your logic and what you're saying and what you stand on and what you showed us in the concordance, white people fit the description of Esau, brother. That's all. That's all we're saying. Okay, but but once again, I showed you according to scripture. You're showing me according to Google. Show me what no, the book. Nobody says. showed you what. Th this is the problem. You showed me something in the Bible, and then I showed you the fact that goes along with what you said in the scripture. This is like nope. I didn't say you were wrong on what the oil, what the fatness of the land meant. Nobody disagreed with you. I'm just saying that if what you're saying is true and what you believe is true, then the description for Esau fits the Caucasian far more than it fits the Arab. That's all we're saying. I didn't disagree with your interpretation I, of scripture. And I, and I'm I hear just what disagreeing you're with the conclusion you that you're coming to based upon your own, based upon your own interpretation and your own findings. It, it works I, I cohesively to prove Esau is white. I hear what you said. I hear what you're saying, but what you're stating is you're talking about you're talking about some Google uh, evidence. But I'm asking you to show me what the books say because your evidence no, no. don't line brother, up with brother, the Bible, brother, and this brother, is what brother. I'm telling you. I'm agreeing with what you say the book says, and then I'm pulling the numbers and the statistics. You said that Mecca was the number one oil producer in the world, but the white man cohesively produces more oil than he does. So I'm not disagreeing. I'm agreeing with what you showed me in the Bible, and then I'm showing you the numbers that prove who Esau is. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with what you're brother, saying, you're scripture, going, bro. Brother, you you got brother. You're the same brother that, that calls the white man the devil, which That's is right. a deceiver, which is a liar. And then you sit up here and go on Google and run with the white man's information. This deceiver's okay, information. So, Show so me no, what the you, book no, says. You run with the white. You run with the white man's information because for you to say that Mecca is the number one 
to you, for you to say that Mecca is the number one producer of oil, the only way you can possibly know that is if a white man produced numbers and you read that somewhere. There's no other way for you. Nobody man, else takes account man, of all the oil production the, in the, the world white man. than the white man. So you can't, like, like, the only way we know how much oil is produced is if somebody tells us how much oil is produced. And according to the person who keeps track of that, America and Russia outproduce nearly double what Saudi Arabia produces. Therefore, what? They must be the Edomite. That's, that's all it is. So let's not play a game yeah, here. We're, we can we can move on and people can make whatever conclusion they want to make. We're yeah. just going. I'm just comparing what game. you say showing, to scripture you, and fact. That's all. We're, we're not we're not playing a game. We're not playing a game. I'm showing you, according to the fatness that Esau had, is referring to oil. That was Boom. the question. I'm with, I'm I answered you. your you're question. Right. You're right. And the white about, man got the most oil in the earth, so that must be the Edomite. The That's question. all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But go ahead. Um. But we're going to see. We're going to see who we're going to see if this is the white man. But go ahead. OK, um, do you do you subscribe to the Apocrypha at all? I subscribe to the Apocrypha. OK, um, second Ezra's. Uh, what, what, what is that? Six, yeah, six. Uh, East South shall be the end of the world. Yeah, I want I want to read it, though, for the audience. Where is it at? It's in nine, 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 nine. OK, uh, second Ezra's chapter six, verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Uh, what's your interpretation of that prophecy? Well, my my my, according to my understanding of that scripture, um, I know that the world don't pass away. The world don't pass away. So that, that that's not really talking about the end of the world. It's talking about the end of the age. That was actually was supposed to be put there. The end of the age. Esau should be the end, meaning the end of the time that's supposed to be taking place before the messiah and etc cetera, etc cetera. as you see right now you see the arabs rising up they're they're everywhere they're, they're spreading the earth like a locust and this that's going on and taking place so that's my understanding the arabs they are going to be the end of the age and that's what you see is going on okay so basically they're going to rise into power above the likes of america russia and uh, uh china etc say that again say it one more time brother you cut out most death okay all right east south it says east south shall be the end of the age and that's exactly what it is those are the ones that you see in revelation beheading us okay um real quick this is a side note i, I didn't have this question planned so I want you to kind of answer it uh, quickly, if you can, please, um, so we can move on. But uh, in Daniel, the four beasts, where did the Arabs, uh, where, where, where is Daniel prophesying about the Arabs, the fourth beast? Because we know we're in the fourth beast right now. Um, how, how can, can you just kind of paraphrase where the Arabs fit in with the, the fourth beast prophecy in Daniel? I mean, um. We're talking about we're talking about a na we're talking about different nations here. You know, you're talking about the Roman Empire. You're talking about the Arab nations. The the uh, when we read Psalms 83, when you read Psalms 83, we clearly see who it is that's termed the Confederacy that's being made. It's all Arab nations. You don't see no white nation there. It's all Arab nation. We can read that. Okay, but we we can we agree that the first beast was the Babylonian, the second beast is the medio persian the third beast is the greeks the fourth beast was the roman empire which had an extent to it and which uh the the, the well can we can we at least agree that it's the roman empire the fourth beast i can't i mean we you know it, it's in the middle because i i know i know according to scripture that mystery babylon is mecca but but see the thing yeah. is if, if, if you know that and if you know that of a certainty but it conflicts with daniel's prophecy of the fourth beast don't you take that into consideration before you come to the conclusion about mystery babylon no i agreed i agreed that the that the roman empire is in mystery babylon mystery that's why it's called a mystery Okay, uh, let me let me ask you about this. With that with that being said, let me ask you about this. Um, this is um, 
This is Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings shall, um, uh, shall the, uh, the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So we know that's talking about the kingdom, and that's talking about the fourth beast, the Roman Empire. So how, where are the Arabs coming in to a Caucasian empire? And that's the one, according to the prophecy of Daniel, that will be taken down in the last days by Christ and the saints. What scripture did you just read? I couldn't hear Daniel you. Daniel 2 Cut and off. 44. 2 and 44 in the book of Daniel. Daniel yeah, it's basically saying It's basically saying after the, after the last beast, then the kingdom of heaven will be set up. Which the last beast uh, was the the fourth beast, the Roman Roman Empire, which which uh, spawned spawned the American Empire, uh, the NATO and EU. Daniel two four. That's the white man. I mean, you just said it was too. The fourth beast is is the Roman Empire. Pardon me. I said we we all agree that the fourth beast was the Roman Empire, so that's the one who uh, is Daniel's prophesying will be taken down by Christ and the saints. And like I say, where does it say Esau or the white man at in this scripture? Well, it's talking about the fourth beast, and that's the one that would be taken down, the fourth beast. So it says in the days of the kings of the fourth beast. So the fourth beast is the Roman Empire. We all just agree to that, right? I said the fourth beast. I said I know that Rome is involved, but I didn't say Rome is the fourth beast. I didn't. No, say you that. said that. Now you're changing again, it up. Now that it doesn't go with. I your never said that with your ideology. No, that's, I, I, that's what I said. That's what I've been told you. I've been well, told he you did, that. He did. He did. <clears throat> you did. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. You said, uh, you, you believe it's a mix of nations, the fourth beast. No, I just said that. I I just said that. I know Rome is involved, but. Once okay, again, okay. I know Mr. Rome is Babylon okay, okay. is Mecca. Okay, all right. So we'll go to the next, the but, next but question. I, like, I well, ask you, like I ask you, if you think, if you're saying that this is the white man right here, show me anything tied to Esau right here. Where, where, where does it state Esau or anything at? According, that's why I'm yeah, saying no it's one, like no one said it you're says adding to the book right here. But if we if if we believe that Esau or the, the Romans were Esau, then we would, of course, believe that Esau has something to do with it right here. But the, the whole thing is the last kingdom on the earth that the saints would take down is the fourth beast. That's what this says, according to the book of Daniel. So, OK, so I, I, I want to understand where the Arabs fit into the fourth beast. I, I, that Now, with all this information coming out, I need to get an understanding on your breakdown and understanding of the fourth beast and where the hell the Arabs fit into it. I mean, once again, this all ties back into Mystery Babylon. It all ties back into Mystery Babylon. Y'all think, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all think that, y'all think that America is Babylon. Y'all think America is Babylon the Great. That's not according to scriptures. You also just said that, that Roman, that the Romans is Esau. So let's, let's touch basis on who Esau is and let's touch basis well, on who well, the Roman and Greeks are. That's, that's what we're asking you about. We're asking right. you about who Esau is. You know, you know what, if, 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 if I want to understand, I want you to break down to me how, what relation the fourth beast has to it, to the Arabs. Show me in the breakdown of the fourth beast, the 10 heads, you know, the seven, I mean, the, the seven heads, the 10 horns, the 10 uh, 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 toes. Where do the Arabs fit into that? Can you show it to me? Let's go to, uh, let's go to Psalms 83. No, no, no. I'm asking Psalms, you. Chapter eight. No, no. I asked you about the beast and the 10 toes and the beast spoken about in Daniel. Can you go yeah, into you there the and show me where the arrow comes from? You're talking about the 10, so I'm going to show it to you. Oh, Psalms chapter 10, 83. Okay, boom. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O Elohim. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O Elohim. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. Now, according to your logic, this is the white man, right? Yes, sir. Okay. No, well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
it, it's not the white man, but the white man is mentioned in, in this. Okay, we're going to see. All right, and then after this, I'm going to get the precept and open diet. All right, so now it says they had they are confederate against thee, right? So now when we go to the precept in the book of Obadiah, we're gonna go back there, and it says Obadiah chapter chapter one, verse six. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden ones, how are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border, the men that were at peace with thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not the, in the day, saith Yahuwah, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding of the Mount of Esau? So now we see the confederacy being spoken about and open back to uh, Psalms chapter 83 to precept this to show you the confederacy. They are uh, so far, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. the tabernacles of Edom. And the Ishmaelites, there they go again, both of them together, of Moab. So we got Edom, the Ishmaelites of Moab, and the Hagarines, Jabal, and Ammon, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assur, also joined in with them. And they have hoping the children of Lot, Salah. So right there, there's your 10 heads. Okay. And those okay. are all so, Arab nations. Those are all, yeah. those are all Arab nations. They're all over the dwelling together. Okay. Okay, okay, so they're, they're all Arab nations, but in verse 7 it says the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, which those are Hamites. So I want to understand how those are Arabs, those are Hamitic people. Those are the ten, those are the ten, ten heads right there. But they're brother, all, you just told me two people who are Arabs that are Hamites. No, That's they're, all, all, they're all within, they're all within that territory. No, no, see now, see now we're playing the game of territory versus lineage because Philistines. And people of Tyre, Zidonians, are Canaanite. Ham well, Hammer. Philistines are uh, Mizraimites, and the Tyreans are Canaanites. So how are they playing in with the rest of these Arabs who are no, Semitic? I'm showing, I'm, showing you, I'm showing you the ten heads. Okay, okay, but you said they're all Arab, but two of them aren't Arab. So that's all I'm asking. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two of them, two of them may be uh, uh, Hamites, but those are the ten heads. Okay, okay, okay. So... With that being said, so what? Where does the Roman Empire relate in, into these ten heads? If you could break that down for me, the Roman, the Roman is not there. Wait, you said you said what, brother? If you could repeat yourself, the Romans, the Romans are not within this scripture. Okay, They're but not mentioned. Well, I'm asking you because in, because in Daniel, because in Daniel, that's in relation to the beast, you know, and the um the the seven heads and the ten horns that came out of it. So if those are the ten horns, what relation to it, and how did it spring out of the seven heads of the Roman Empire? How did how did that happen? How did what what extend out of the uh, seven heads of the Roman Empire? Ba basically, you know the the prophecy of the beast in Daniel. It's the beast, and it had seven heads, and it had ten horns, right? So you you said that right. the ten horn aspect that's the ten nations that you just named in uh, Psalms eighty three, right? Absolutely. But what relation uh, do they have to the seven heads? How did they spring out of the seven heads, which now, again, you, you said Rome has something to do with it. So if you could just give me, you know, clarification on um, the relation between these kingdoms. The relation between the Romans and the ten heads that I just mentioned? Yes, sir. Oh, it just uh, right now it just clearly shows we are in captivity amongst. Who we're in captivity? We're amongst Japheth right now, the Roman Empire. So this is, it shows you, the, what I just mentioned, we were captivity under these people. And we're under, we're under captivity right now in the, in the modern day Mizraim, Egypt. Okay, okay. It's that simple. But, okay, okay, so, but I, I just want to understand how these 10 Arab nations are going to spring out of these, the, the Roman or the, you know, the, the European nations. How, how, like, how is that going to happen? Because it, it says that these 10 horns spring out of these seven heads. So I just want to understand how that works. How the ten horns sprang out of these seven heads? Yeah, according to the under captivity of under, we we was already under captivity under these nations that I just mentioned. We're in we're in we're in the Roman 
period now under captivity in the modern day Mizraim. So they already they already exist and already been set up. Okay, I understand that, but my thing is, how do these ten Arab nations spring out of these seven European nations? How how are Arabs springing out of Europeans? They're, they're working together. They're working together. Uh, America is nothing but the puppet. That's all they is. No, America's nothing but the puppet. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is the head behind the scenes, and 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 that's it. they're all working together. Okay, okay. Uh, you have some. Go ahead. Yeah, let, let let me read the prophecy so you can kind of understand what the brother's saying. All right. Uh, Daniel chapter seven, uh, verse seven. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had iron, great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them and another little horn before whom there were three horns i'm sorry before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn uh were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things now in these ten horns it it took, <coughs> one of the ten horns took down three three of the previous horns to become a world power is that within the con uh, uh, a correlation with psalms 83 is that the revelation in constant with the uh, psalms 83 i was just showing yeah. you basically psalms 83 the 10 heads and mm -hmm. and like i already answered the question all of them are working together all of them but mecca but, but, saudi arabia is the head and the romans are nothing but the puppet they're all working together it's that simple okay okay so so the thing is though that okay with that being said who are who is the little head that's going to spring out of those 10 heads and who are the three heads that he's going to slew? Answer. I don't know yet. I'm not going to make a prophecy. And then all of a sudden my prophecy is not correct. So I'm going to stand corrected all on right. that and I'm not going to answer that. Okay. Okay. All right. For sure, brother. Okay. Can't nobody be mad at that. Um, another side note too, because this is kind of going somewhere. I don't want to go too far. Right. But I want to ask you this. Uh, the Bible speaks about the, the, the modern day Babylon that, um, the children of Israel were going to be there uh, predominantly and being oppressed there together. And you say it's Mecca. Can you show me um, the mass influx of Israelites in Mecca doing all the great works that the Bible says that they would do, especially in Revelation, uh, doing great works of prophecy? Even can you show me maybe an Israelite camp that's in Mecca teaching our people the truth? Not just being persecuted, but doing the works of a prophet. Well, um, first off, we got to deal with Isaiah 11 and 11 because we got to see where the children of Israel went. So according to according to uh, Mizraim or Egypt, which just uh, means bondage in Exodus 22, 22, um, um, it just basically to me, it means wherever Israelites have been scattered, that is um, uh, that is basically modern day Egypt. So uh, according to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that Yahuwah shall set his hand again the second time, the second time, future prophecy, to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Milam and from from the islands of the sea. So we clearly see the northern kingdom is clearly in these lands right here that just was mentioned. Then he says, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Yahuda from the four corners of the earth. So we clearly see that there's Israelite corners of the earth the kingdoms is located at. Now, according to the uh, uh, to the Messiah, he says the end won't tell um, this word is, is prophesied throughout all the world. So we're still waiting for that to happen. And that's why you don't see prophets over there yet. And a lot of people, if they go to, they try to go to Mecca with that, the Esau land, off with your head. You're going to really see they live by that sword. Okay. I, that, that's, that's a good point. Um, what's that? 15, 32. Oh, yeah. But before, let me ask him a mm -hmm. question. Um, so what, you're, what, you're, what I asked you the other day, I'm not going to put you on blast, brother. I've been keeping it real with you since I reached out to you. I asked you the other day, 
are we going to go into another captivity? Because what we believe and what an <coughs> if yeah. Babylon is not America, we're going into captivity again. And a lot of brothers I know, cool, solid brothers, you know, I deal with them. They believe that the Edomites are the Arabs, and they believe that we are going into captivity again after this one. Now, if you, you're saying that we haven't got over there yet, and they're going to oppress us, essentially, you're saying that we're going into captivity again. <coughs> no, I never said that. No, I'm not saying you're saying that, but if you're saying we haven't got there yet, which the Bible says we're going to be persecuted there and be getting beheaded, then that's equivalent to a captivity again. Oh, absolutely not. Hey, can can you elaborate on uh, uh on oh, how not? how you know what you mean? I mean, I, I came to I can't discuss about who Esau is. I didn't come to discuss about Babylon, mystery Babylon. I just want to stay on topic about who okay, Esau is. I want to show who show who the white man. Okay, come, come, I came right, to discuss. Come, 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 come. Maybe we can maybe we can come back and do a dialogue. A, a, a different day. My bad. That's, I, that's fine. Um. Okay. So we can move on to some good, some good, some 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 good questions. Um. Oh, good question. Um. Are the uh, if the Edomites are the Arabs, and we go to Second Chronicles. What I, what I want to know is, are they ever mentioned as two distinct nations, if they're if they're uh, one nation? Are they ever mentioned of them being one nation? No, 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 no. Are they ever mentioned as two distinct nations? <clears throat> I couldn't hear you. Broke up, brother. Like, like, basically, are 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 is the nation of Edom ever mentioned in contrast? to arabs are they mentioned the contrast into arabs um absolutely when um here let's get the scripture um i can show you i'm gonna show you locations just to show you of future prophecies about the locations and who's actually dwelling in that land on how i know this is referring to the arab nation which is Esau. Um, let's go to Numbers 21 and 4. Because we have to deal with locations. And I noticed that, you know, a lot of brothers that teach the word, they need locations. They never go into them because once they do the research on these locations, they can't deny it. If they try to deny it, then they're denying the word. So we have to go into the locations where Esau is dwelling at. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. Let's start at verse 3. And Yahuwah hearkened unto the voice of Israel and delivered up the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities and called the name of the place Hormah. And they, and they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. So now we see it's talking about Edom. And the soul of the people was much dis discourage because the way so we clearly see we clearly see in this scripture is mentioned a location mount hor mount hor and stuff this is clearly um um saudi arabia and petra um let's get another precept four verse 18. four verse 18. it says and edom shall be a possession seer another location also shall be a possession for the enemies, and Israel shall do belanity. So we clearly see here we got Mount Seir. This is another location that's 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 uh within the, the the Arab countries. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter two verse four, another preset to show another location. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 4. It's in thou, the people saying, ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, another location, same as I just showed you. So we have another loca a location in prophecy. Let's go to Isaiah 
chapter 63. This is this is the coming of the Messiah, Slar and Esau. As a matter of fact, let's let's go to um Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. He says, For my sword shall be bathed in Shamaim. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. The location in, 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 in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. That's another location. Idumia. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of Yahuwah is swilled with blood and is fat with the fatness and the blood and with the blood of the lambs and the goats and with the fat of the kidneys of the, for the rams. For Yahuwah have a sacrifice in Bozrah. There go another location. And the great slaughter in the land of Idumia. So we have Bozra, the land of Idumia, of uh, Petra. We have these many locations. One more scripture because I ain't going to hold y'all up too long. Uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1, future prophecy. He says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Bozra? Precept. Through that precept, we get understanding. This is future prophecy. That this that is glorious in his appeal, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in the righteousness mighty to save. So we have another uh, 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 location, which is Bozra. So my question to you guys, because I, I barely asked y'all any questions. Could you explain to me where these locations are located and who are who are who is in this land as of today? Yeah, uh, we can we can do that. But um, we want to finish the question because this is a two part question that we was asking you. So we can deal with that after we ask this and they and it all it all goes cohesively so uh, I, th I believe it'll work together for the edification of, of, of the people that's watching um um uh, you got that so the question was see because we're saying that esau is the arabs right but i want to show you something here in the history real quick in in the book of chronicles if you could pull that really quick out which one uh uh the arabians oh no that was uh, Isaac. what we showed, showed the other night yeah, the Arabians. Yeah, like come, come. Wherever it's at, pull it. Okay, uh, Isaiah chapter 13, verse um, so like 20. 20. No, no, no. That's, not, that's not what I'm talking about. No, no, no. One second. Um, what the, the lands, when it's talking about the kings of Arabia. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, <laughs> 20. that's 20. Okay. You all right. Is it yeah, yeah, I'm gonna grab that scripture though. I'm gonna grab that scripture after you're done. If you could, if you could. So like my bad, my bad. Um that's that's not the scripture I actually wanted. So um uh about the land, oh, I hear you. The I, land being destroyed. You said what? You said what y'all done? Uh, I was gonna I was gonna quote that scripture as well. All right, that's fine. See, that, that that they went to somewhere in Isaiah about it, and that's not that's I was thinking of something different in Chronicles, so it's all right. Um Okay, well, well can I read that scripture real quick? That he pulled what? you said what? I said, may I read that scripture real quick that he pulled? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Isaiah chapter 13, verse 20. It says, and it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian, the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. So when we're dealing with, you know, the precepts even show that this land right here is actually... And they even gave you by name who's 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 uh actually living amongst that land. Well, it would, but but it's funny because it's referring to Edom, and then it refers to Arabia, the Arabian, in contrast, as if they're not the same people. But also, if you could, um, you got that? Where is that at? No, Isaiah twenty-one. Any uh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, the one I need uh about us possessing it. They okay, the sound. Let me get that because here's the thing. According to that prophecy, Edom will never be dwelt in again. It'll be a desolate and utter wasteland, correct? Absolutely. That's that's referring to uh, uh, Mystery Babylon the Great being being wiped off. Yep. Oh, is it referring to Edom? It's referring to Edom, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. But perfect. remember, all dwelling amongst each other. 
Okay, the Arab. Okay, okay, boom, boom. I'm with you. Go ahead, Ari. Okay, this is uh, Obadiah uh, verse, I'm going to start at 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Verse 19. And they of the south. They of the south. Shall, the, the, the Judah, right, read. Shall possess. Shall what? Shall possess. Read. The Mount of Esau. So wait a minute. The, the day of the south, the Judah is going to possess the Mount of Esau. But according to the prophecy you just read, you're saying that Edom is Mystery Babylon. But Mystery Babylon will be utterly wasted, a perpetual waste, and will never be dwelt in. And a man will never pass through it again according to what the prophecies say. So if that's the case, how the hell are we possessing it? How are we, how is that becoming amalgamated into the inheritance of the tribe of Judah if it can it never be dwelt in again and nobody can ever pass through it? Because what you have to understand is when we deal with Mystery Babylon, the, the scriptures clearly said that once the once the um the pitch is burning, it should be burning forever and ever and ever. You know what I'm saying? The topic. So now when you when you went here to open Daya, right? I'm gonna show you. We're going to go to Obadiah chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse, verse 8. He says, Shall I not in that day, say if Yahuwah, even destroy the wise man out of Edom, and understanding out of the mount of Esau, and the mighty man, O T man, shall be dismayed to the end that of every, every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. So we clearly see T man there, and we can all also get a precept to show you the location that T man and D man is as well in Ezekiel uh chapter 25 verse 13. Just real quick a precept. And I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to your your uh what you're making your point in uh open die one and 18. All right so Ezekiel chapter 25 uh verse 13 he says therefore thus saith Yahuwah Elohim I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it and I will make it desolate from T-Man, and they of D-Man shall fall by the sword. So we once again, we have locations there again, showing you where the where Esau is actually dwelling, which is Saudi Arabia. I right, to Obadiah chapter 1. Obadiah chapter 1, verse um 17. But upon the Mount of Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Yaquab shall possess his, and the house of Yaquab shall of joseph of flame and the house of esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them and there shall not be any remaining of the house of esau for yahuwah have spoken it and they of the south shall possesses the mount of esau and they of the plain of the philistine shall possesses the fields of ephraim and the fields of samaria and benjamin shall possesses galilee so we clearly see when you refer to the scripture about um no, nobody dwelling in that land anymore Ex correct me if i'm wrong or if i'm um um stating your making your statement correct me if i'm wrong or if you can re, re replay say what you just stated concerning um Obadiah 1 and 18 about jacob not being a or or esau not being in the land anymore um explain that again no 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 that that's not the point i made the point i made was if this if, <coughs> if this land is going to be an utter, uh, utter and perpetual waste, as as the prophecy says. Then how are they of the south going to possess it? They of the south, they of the south has nothing to do with um, us over here. Or you have to understand, we were we were spread it to the four corners of the globe, brother. No, and no, this no. also is referring uh, 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 to. It also says, but upon a Mount Zion shall be delivered. So is this is this prophecy? Now, now here, here's the thing. Of course, Obadiah is future prophecy, but it says after we waste Edom, we're going to waste it, and then we're going to possess it. Yet the prophecy prophecies also say that it's going to be a perpetual and utter waste forever, even forever and ever. So I want to understand how we are going to possess a land that's going to be an utter and perpetual waste, and no man is going to pass through. I mean, I, I just showed it. You're asking a question that the scripture is just reading and, and telling you exactly what's going to take place. 
No, but wait a minute. It's going to be an utter and perpetual waste, but we're going to live there. We're going to live there. You have to understand that that Mecca, that Mecca is also uh, uh, within Israel. Mecca is the chosen land as well. But you have to understand be an utter and perpetual waste. How are we going to live there? That's th th that's this is what I'm asking. I mean, because, because, be because this is utter and because this is after waste. because but, this, but is, this is after the destruction. This is after the destruction of Edom. The word perpetual means infinite. So if it's going to be a perpetual waste, how are we ever going to live there? I mean, hey, you say that that is, but once again, according to the scripture, clearly reads out what's going to happen and what's going to take place. And I just told you, you're asking me a question where that the scripture itself is explaining to you and answering for you. No, and, and the thing is, I don't disagree with that. I'm just saying, according to what you're saying it is and what the interpretation is, the script the script the prophecies contradict themselves but go ahead now what, look, look let me let me word it in a different way how can we thrive and possess a land and live there like the bible says if that land is prophesied to be a perpetual desolation from generation to generation unless that the bible is speaking and saying they're not in this land but the land they are in is going to be a perpetual desolation if you can feel what I'm saying. That's what the Bible says. It's going to be a perpetual desolation, des uh, desolation and uh, Father ordained is exactly what's going to happen. So it's going to be a per perpetual like, desolation. That's what I'm saying. Your question. That we're that's what I'm saying. Your question, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Your question is vain because it clearly tells you in the scripture what's no. going to happen. No, no, Meaning no. It's giving you the answer. Our, our, qu our question is not vain. And we don't disagree with what the scriptures are saying. We're disagreeing with what you interpret the scriptures to be saying. You're telling me right now that I'm going to live and thrive or, or our people are going to live and thrive and possess a place that God said would be an utter, total, perpetual desolation that no man shall pass through. Right. So that doesn't make sense. Right. Well, to me, to me, it makes sense because that's refer that's is actually explaining about after the destruction. But perpetual is infinity. So there ain't no after the destruction. It's going to always be there smelting. Yeah, let me let me let me read let me read some scriptures because again we want to be want to be satisfactory to our audience. So this okay. is uh this is Isaiah chapter 34. It says uh let's start at verse five. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made with fatness and with blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. I'm going to skip down. Verse 10. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Now, right, and according exact... to that, forever. Look, right, look, and look, according look. to that, forever. Go according ahead. to that, forever. My understanding to that is not referring to, is not referring to. It, it, it will it will be for an entire ever. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about a certain distance of time. Okay, and and I, we would agree that in in once again, when it says once forever, again. When, when it says forever in the Bible, that's true. But when it when it says forever, even forever and ever, that it is talking about forever. When it uses a phraseology like perpetual, that it is talking about forever, not just forever a time, an age. It says forever, even forever and ever. You see what I'm saying? Emphasizing the long period of time that this is going to happen. You see exactly now, exactly let me, let me, exactly let me, long let me exactly you just said what, what a long time. No, go ahead, go ahead. that's no, just like, like, we like to, i said when it says like when you went to second Ezra, even six, forever nine, and ever that's just like when you went to second Ezra, chapter six verse that's nine so my, my fault, well, my fault. i ahead. mean hey you know once again that, that's just like when you went to second Ezra six and nine and you read about um esau shall be the end of the world you per you you you're thinking that it's the end of the world. 
I, no, I take that not. scripture we as don't think it's, that it's the, the end of the age. world. We, we agree that it's the that's end of the like, age. We didn't think uh, that. Nah, no, nah. I'm just saying. I'm just oh, giving okay. an example. Okay, go, go ahead, bro. Chill that's out. just like right here when it says it's forever and ever, it's not talking about forever and ever and ever and ever. It's just talking about a certain period of time. That's it. No, I, like that's I why said, when you read forever, out, open, forever one time by itself means that, but when it starts saying forever, even forever and ever, that's if infinite we're talking yeah, about when me, it starts emphasizing go let, ahead, let me read it again let me read it again isaiah 34 and 10 it shall not be quenched night nor day the smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation from generation to generation read it shall lie waste uh-huh none shall pass through it it shall always lie waste none shall pass through it read forever forever nobody can and pass through it and ever so if it's talking about literal edom that the most High has promised to the southern kingdom how is it that we're gonna live somewhere that's a perpetual desolation one more percent. unless it's talking okay. about someplace else one, 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 one. ezekiel 35 and 9 ezekiel 35 and 9 i will make the perpetual desolations and thy cities shall not return and you shall know that I am the Lord. Yeah, and that, that term perpetual means infinite, forever, always, continuous existence, everlasting. That's what that means. Now, let me read one more scripture then. We're going we're gonna to give our understanding, and then you can rebuttal, and then we can move on. So what I'm going to spend too much on this term. Uh, Numbers yeah. chapter 24, verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come... A star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, future prophecy, with our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? And destroy the children of Sheth, and Edom shall be a possession. <coughs> Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Now, the only way we can, if the Bible is saying that, this land is going to be an infinite destruction, but we're going to dwell in this land is if it's saying that these people are not in their land, but the lands that they're dwelling in are going to be a perpetual desolation. If not, then the scriptures are going through a case of schizophrenia. Absolutely not. Because once again, my understanding of forever and ever is completely different. So we have to agree to this on that, okay. on that instance. So now okay. I'm going to give okay. you... Like you know scripture what? where you went to forever and ever. Also, second Ezra's. I'm gonna go to uh, Deuteronomy 28, 68, just for an example. It says, And Yahuwah shall bring thee into Egypt again, which whereof I spake unto thee. There thou shalt see it no more again. So, right here, we we clearly see it saying that we see the land of Egypt, but we are in modern day captivity. So, you know, once again, this is why I'm trying to show. You, when you read the scriptures, you have to be very careful and also deal with the he he Hebraic and original text. But I'm going to go back to Isaiah, where you went to. I'm going to go back to Isaiah chapter uh, 34, because I've noticed something that you got. You guys, you, you're not going to answer this question, but I'm going to show you something. You read Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bathed in Shamayim. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. You read this, but you still have not answered what this word is location is, but y'all say Esau's the white man, many Greeks, and we are over here in the country right now. But this is uh, upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of Yahoo is filled with the blood. And then we read down, it says the great slaughter in the land of Idumia and had and Yahuwah had a sacrifice in Bozrah. Those are those are uh uh three locations that has been given that you ran right over. You ran, you read over these these scriptures. So we gotta we gotta touch topic on this because I ain't gonna let y'all I ain't gonna let y'all off the hook until y'all give me locations on this stuff. Then you read down in verse nine. You say, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. This is actually talking about the destruction of modern day uh, uh, of uh, um mystery Babylon the Great. But I'm gonna show you something. It says, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. Pitch. What is the Hebrew word for pitch? It's oil, brother. Oyo, brother, the scripture just clearly showed you in Idumia, Basra, the land of Idumia. Then it shows you that this pitch will be turned into streams, which is oil. And it clearly showed you earlier with the blessings that was given to uh, Esau 
with the fatness I showed you it was referring to oil, showing you how all this is tying in together. So now we see right here, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become a burning pitch. Now I'm about to read over here to where you went again. Isaiah chapter 35, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that where you went to? Isaiah 35 after that? Ezekiel. Or Ezekiel. Let's go there. Ezekiel 35, right? Now, Ezekiel chapter 35. <laughs> And where was you at? Uh, seven through nine. No, seven to 25, nine and 25, right? 15. No, you no, said no. Which one? 30, 25. Ezekiel 35, 35, 35, 35, 7 to 9, and then the 15th. All right, most death. Now it says, Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from, from it him that passes out of him and return it. It says, I will, I will fill his mountains, his mountains, his mountains. What is what is sitting on the, in Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia is sitting on the mountains. We are not sitting on no mountains over here like Saudi Arabia. Let's continue. He says, with his slain men in thy hills and thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. And I will make thee perpetual desolations of thy, and thy cities shall not return. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah. And you went down to, um. Skip the, let's go to uh, Ezekiel. Skip. 25. 35, 35. You said 15? 35? Oh, yeah, he skipped down to 15. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, 15. Let's go to 15. He says, as thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir. You Once again, location. And all Idumia, you read over that again, No a location, even all of it. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah. So now, I asked you guys earlier, I gave you the locations. I gave you Petra. I gave you Mount Seir. I gave you the Idumia. I gave you T-Man and D-Man in Ezekiel 25 and 13. I gave you all of these locations and you guys still haven't answered my question to show me who's dwelling in this land. Show me who's dwelling in this land right now. Okay, that, that's perfect. Location, location, location. We could deal with location. But first, just quickly, before I deal with location, wow. I just want to say you referenced pitch and we and, and you said it meant oil. And we've already proved who produces the most oil, which is the white man. But anyway, real quick, he, you keep talking about location, location, location. Let's go to the book of Zechariah, the first chapter. And let's go to, uh, let's see here. Um, where is it at? Right here. 17. Right here in 19. This is Zechariah 1 and 19. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. How do you scatter Jerusalem? Did these horns go and cut the land of Jerusalem up and scatter it all over the world? Or did they enslave the Israelites and scatter us and sold us to every kingdom right, in the world? That's right. Don't play simple, man. All right? Okay, so people, now. Number one, you're dealing with people and places. The people who anciently resi resided in certain places no longer reside there anymore. They have been moved to other places on the earth due to various things. So if we are being referred to as Jerusalem, is it a far-fetched concept to believe that the Edomites are being called by the names of the ancient cities but possibly dwell somewhere else? Is that far-fetched? Am I insane for coming to that conclusion? Yes or no? Okay, let's get a precept for that. That's why, that's why you can't provide no precept to that. And I'm about to shut you down. All right. Now let's go to Joel. Hey, take give me your best shot. Let's go to Joel. Because you talking about how could we let's get it for that and let's see who it was. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to the book of Joel. You getting all hype for nothing, brother. Now, Joel, chapter 3, and we're going to read, we're going to start at verse 4. He says, Yea, 
And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Will ye render me recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. And the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. Once again, we have the Hamites here, we have the Arab nation here, and we also and we also see the, the Grecians here, period. And these people sold the children of Israel and also the children of Jerusalem and scattered them. That's the precept to your Zechariah. This is the point, and, and thank you for making my point. There is not a man named Jerusalem that we descend from. That doesn't exist. So we are being called as a people after the name of our capital city. You just proved it with your Absolutely. precept. I proved it with mine. So I'm Absolutely. asking you the question, is it far-fetched that if the Most High is doing that for us in prophecy, can he possibly be doing that for any other nation in prophecy? Yes or no? You, you, don't have to, you don't have to say that he did do it for Esau. I'm just saying, if he did it for us, is it possible that he could have did it for anybody else prophetically? Yes or no? I'm going to tell you this. Show it to me in the book. Well, here's the thing. I just showed you how people are called after the name of the city that they lived in. I just showed that to you. So I did just show it to you in the book, and you just showed it to you in the book according to the precept that you just read. So you mean to tell me we're the only people that that could happen to? Absolutely not. But I, uh, what I'm well, telling you is this. Well, then. What, what I'm telling you is this. What uh -huh. I'm telling you is this. You need to show me Esau being taken out of their land and never coming back. Well, I can show you that in history, and we can show it in the Bible, but you know, that's fine. Yeah, I need to see that. Show me Esau being taken out of their land. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. I didn't say, actually, I never said Esau was ever taken out of their land. That's that, that, uh, No one ever said that. So and you still, and you still ain't answered my question about the locations. Matter of fact, who's got, uh, go in my bag, give me the GNT. I'm going to show you a biblical map. Since we're talking about locations and geography, can I show you a biblical map? Go ahead. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Hey, Give I'm, me the GNT out of there. Go ahead, make it. Let point. me ask you this quick side note, brother. Are the people that dwell in the lands today everywhere the indigenous people uh, of that land? Are they the originals? Absolutely, I can't say that. But according to Esau, Edom, the the Bible clearly shows you future prophecy and even the present and past prophecy. Edom was always there. Okay. All right. Well, here's my question, right? Are you familiar with the ancient Nabataean Empire? The ancient Nabataean Empire? Go ahead. Are, are you familiar with them is what I'm asking? Somewhat, somewhat. Somewhat. They're, they're Arabs. Do, do, do you have any, do, do you, you know about that, right? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, so they came from the bottom of Saudi Arabia. So as we take a look at these biblical maps here, this is in the a Good News Translation Bible for the record. So as we a look G at these biblical maps, we see the, you said what I, a G and T that's missing all type well, of scriptures and stuff. No, it, it's not about the fact. It's just about the historical references that are in the back. I'm not saying that the G, that G and T book, is bro. the that's Holy true. Bible. You said what? I, that, that book faulty, brother. Well, I didn't say that it's translation of the scripture was 100. I'm just talking about the historical information that's in the back of any Bible should be accurate. Yes or no? I don't believe that. Well, all right, well, that's fine. You ain't got to believe it. And you can check any uh reference if what i'm going to say and what i'm going to present out the back of this is true historically and no one will disagree so as we can see here we see the the ancient border of edom do you believe this is accurate i can't see it it's like super blurry damn yeah it's real well, blurry i can't even i can't even read the letters well, well that's that's uh, all i see uh, is judah okay okay well if 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 not then maybe hopefully people can see it it's the same one that'll be in the back of anybody. This one here, right? Edom, Moab, Judah, whatever, right? So as we move on, hopefully people can see this and I'm not wasting my time. But as we see here, you have Nabatea. Nabatea starts moving up from Saudi Arabia and pushing Esau away. As we go here, we see how Nabatea has pushed Edom and possessed Arabs now 
possess Esau's land, and Esau's land gets keeps getting pushed further north. This is a historical reference. Now, somebody could check me on my word, or somebody could go and research whether or not the Nabataeans did that push and did push Esau's borders and begin to push them northward towards Europe. Anybody could take a look at it. You don't got to accept it. You know, it's, it's up to each individual brother to do that research. But I just wanted to present that. In, All right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I got to say this. I'm going to say this. Book, chapter, and verse. Show it to me. Well, at, at the time when this happened, the Bible was done being re uh, written. So, I mean, I don't understand book, how you expect the historical account, Show account it of that in the Bible. Would that happen? You said what? Book, chapter, and verse. Show it to me. Show me Esau being called Arabs in the Bible. Can you show that to me? I've already showed it to you. That's why you ain't. That's why you ain't still answer where the locations is at. Cause you know you are gonna kill yourself. Where no, is listen, these locations like at? I, just, I answered the question. I answered the question. Just the same way Jerusalem no, got ain't. scattered. How no, did me. Jerusalem get scattered? But through slavery, right? Jerusalem got scattered through slavery. Yes or no? Hey, I showed it to you out the Bible. Show is a me geographical me location. Edom. I want to know how a geographical show location me Edom got Edom losing their location. I showed show you me, in the no, Bible. I want you to show me a geographical location being scattered. Can you show it to me? If you can't show it to me, then you must admit that sometimes in the Bible, when it refers to a geographical location in name, it's actually referencing allegorically the people who descend from that geographical location. Book, chapter, and verse. What we just I just showed it to you in Zechariah the first chapter. Then you pulled a corresponding verse in the book of Joel. No, I'm talking about when I say book, chapter, and verse, I want you to show me Edom losing their land and getting pushed down north, like you just showed on the back of that that, I, that crazy I, I Bible just, you just I just told you that that happened after the Bible was being done written. So how are there book, chapter, and verse to document something that happened after the book of Revelation was written? Can you explain it you to me? You know why you can't show it? Why? You know why you can't show it? Tell me, please, because enlighten you're me. Lying. You're lying. Because I'm a liar. So now, 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 now I'm a liar. Why can't I just be misinformed? Why, why couldn't I have been misled? Now I'm a liar, right? Hey, now man. I'm a liar. But all I'm saying is, but, but once it, you know, you know why I'm getting upset. I, you know why I'm getting upset. I, the reason why I'm getting upset Tell is us why. because y'all been asking me questions this whole time. And answering your questions. I asked you one question about these locations. You pull up a book. You pull up a, 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 a no, GMT no, I pulled translation. The book of Zechariah. That's the book I pulled. The book of Zechariah. Brother, this Zechariah did not show me. That Zechariah does not show where the lands of Esau is located. I read I read over over seven to seven to ten precepts okay, right, showing right, you the, right, the right, land right, where I, I Esau you, dwells. I, I, wanna, I want you to I want you to really understand what I'm saying, and I want you to like think intellectually here. I'm showing you so, an example in the Bible of people being referred to by the name of a geographical locale, and I'm showing you this to support the interpretation that we have to the, the references to certain geographical locale is more concerned with the people who used to dwell in that locale than it is the true geographical location, okay? That was the point of me going to Zechariah the first chapter because the Bible okay. works like that. It calls people after the names of their cities, you wanna, since okay? You, you, you can't, you, 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 and you have to admit it because you went to a scripture that corresponded okay. with that. So I'm telling you that the Basra is talking about is the place where the Edomites dwell. Right, we agree on that. I just say that the Edomites where do they dwell, dwell in the Western world, and you say they dwell where they used to dwell. You said what? Okay, so so I'm gonna show you something. Now, since you want to pull up maps, I'm gonna go to Ezekiel 25 and 13. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, I also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and will cut off man and beast from it. Is this future prophecy? Yes or no? Yes. And I will make it desolate from T man, and they of D Dan shall fall by the sword. We about to show you located. It's clearly located in Saudi Arabia. Thus saith the Bible. Thus saith the Bible. Hold on, wait a minute. Is that that's the Bible? That map is the Bible? Now I gotta play the same game you just played. You just said thus saith the Bible. Is that map the Bible? Let's not brother, play a game here. Brother, what you're trying <laughs> you to do. You just said, thus saith the Bible, teaming is in the bottom of Saudi Arabia. The Bible didn't say that. You said it according to a map anybody could have made. Okay. So, so that's I'm subjective. Just I admitted that my source was subjective. Can you do that? 
source of the land in Mecca. Your source didn't even show it. I'm showing you, according to scripture, the location and also showed you the map where it's located. If you even do the research, no, no, all no. my brothers the and sisters didn't out there. Tell us hold on, hold on, hold on. The map all my brothers and sisters the scripture out there. Didn't say. All, my, all, all my brothers and sisters out there that's listen, please do your research on these locations. When you look up T-Man and D-Dan, you're clearly going to see this is Saudi Arabia. You're clearly going to see it. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you guys. This man playing semantics honest about it i'm telling y'all do when your did research I, when, did, when did i play see, semantics when did i play semantics way. can you can you define semantics when did i play semantics no ad hominem Absolutely. attacks here you're running you, exactly no you're running from my here. question that's you, what you nobody doing. ran for your question you see how you had the result to ad hominem attacks we haven't insulted you or we haven't tried to do an ad hominem attack against you at all we're attacking the false understanding that you have of the bible now you're trying to make it an ad hominem attack call us liars and that we're playing semantics are you kidding me Come on now. Go ahead, though. Okay. Oh, God, you okay. Go so um, once again, I'm I'm gonna give you another one. I'm about to give you another one. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 let me point. let me make a point real quick. Um. So who 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 was prophesied to destroy, uh, what, what, what you consider Edom Babylon today? Pardon me. Who who is who is prophesied to destroy Babylon today? Or what you would consider modern day Babylon. Brother, you're off topic again. We're talking about who is Esau and who's the white man. No, no, no. Brother. You said prove you said prove ah, you said prove that they were scattered or not. So I'm asking you, who was prophesied to destroy, who is prophesied to destroy Babylon? Yahusha Hamashiach. Okay. So I'm going to read Jeremiah 49 and 20. It says, therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at 19. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is, cho and who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me and who will appoint me that time and who is that shepherd that will stand before me therefore hear the counsel of the lord that he have taken against edom and his purposes that he had purpose against the inhabitants of teman surely the least of the flock shall draw them out what does that mean surely the least of the flock shall draw them out what does that mean the flock shall draw them out Huh? <coughs> I couldn't like you were breaking up a little bit. What'd you say? I bring it, bring it out to me. What 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 does the least of the flock shall draw them out? What does that mean? Explain. Okay. <coughs> what it means is the young of the flock will be dragged away from Edom, meaning they were gonna get conquered from the adults to the little children, and the least of the flock, the youngest of the flock, the little babies and little children will be drugged out the land as well, all right? So it says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. So when did this happen? This is referring, this is a uh, future prophecy. It's, it's, it's future prophecy? Who's, dra who's, dragging the, who's dragging the babies out to captivity? You said what? Who is dragging their least of the flock out to captivity? Who's dragging their least of flock out to captivity? Right. Let's uh start at um Jeremiah 49 and 7. Because y'all read down more. Or, or Jeremiah 49 and 6. He says, and afterward I will bring again the captivity of the children of, of Oman. So, so we clearly see what's taking place here and then it says concerning edom thus saith yahuwah of hosts is wisdom no more in t man we clearly see a location there again then it says is counsel perish from the proof is their wisdom vanished flee ye turn back dwell deep O inhabitants of d dan we clearly see another location there for i will bring the calamity of esau upon him the time that i will visit him if great gatherers come to thee, will they not leave some gleaning grapes? If these by night, they will destroy. 
This is also the precept for open diet chapter one. Then it says, um, but I have made Esau bear and have uncovered his secret places. So his secret places have already been found. Then it says, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and all his and, and his neighbors. And he is not leave the, thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith Yahuwah, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup of have assuredly drunken. What cup is that referring to? The cup of the judgment of the Lord. Okay. Now it says, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. So now, when you read down the thing, it talks about the perpetual wastes and all of that stuff. So according to your question, you would, well, it doesn't say it doesn't it doesn't say perpetual way. No, I'm saying in uh in 13, when you read down to verse 13, it says, For I have sworn by myself, saith Yahuwah, that Bozra, another location, shall become a desolation, a re reproach, a waste, and a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be purpose. So we clearly see it. <clears throat> and once again, you read in these scriptures, but you are not providing these locations in the Middle East. You how how could you guys take the location and future prophecies and make all of this be America? You have to show them. Mm -hmm. Some some of it is some of it is Go ahead, uh, Salak, you make your point, bro. I made my point. I'm just saying, bro, when Esau got taken out of their land and haven't been back, you have to show because I'm showing you locations after locations, and you guys are pulling these scriptures still mentioning itself and you guys still have not touched point on this stuff which is clearly <coughs> Middle East. We, not, we, well actually we have we have touched point on it we gave justification for why we believe what we believe you can accept it or not accept it but we gave this justification you know what? okay so you got, um, are these locations you got, amos, you got amos one you got the amos and joel right yeah you know what let's do that so you you pulled something in joel right joel the third chapter about um the Greeks, the Philistines, and the those of uh, Tyre and Zidon, correct? Absolutely. Boom. Powerful prophecy, right? Is it not? And for, and <coughs> for, so I want to show you. For, now, Joe, you said what? Go ahead. My, my fault. Go ahead. I, I, I said, I said, I just want to show. I just want to. Um. um just one of these locations before you continue. This says, um, Idumia that we just read. This is the strong concordance. This is Edom, Edom, red. And we clearly see the locations here. Southeast Palestine, which is Arabia, the Middle East. So are you saying that the concordance is a lie according to these locations? No, listen, no, no one said that the ancient location of the Edomites was anywhere outside of the Middle East. No one has ever said that at any point in today's conversation. So let's let's not let's not get that twisted. No, what I'm okay. trying to see here with you, what I'm trying to see here with you is let this. Me, let, let me ask you this real quick. Right. Babylon is ancient Babylon the same as mystery Babylon. Yes or no? Absolutely. It's still over there. Thus saith the Bible. It's, but wait a minute. Arabia is not iraq saudi arabia is not mecca is not iraq those are two different places okay but once again is this within the same landmass? yes or no no it's not because where the ancient city of babylon lays is in the country of iraq where you're saying babylon is is mecca those are two different places so according to your logic babylon can't be mecca it's got to be iraq Okay, so once again, you you even you even killing him because you even stating that this stuff is in the Middle East. No. So once again, I just showed you the land of Idumia. I just showed you the land of Idumia. Well, I just showed you uh, the city of Babylon uh, he, being in Iraq and not in Mecca, but you're telling me it's in Mecca. So can you explain that, brother? I gave I already explained that in um Isaiah when he pulled it earlier showing you the arabian ain't even gonna pitch tent there remember this is but, they all, but all mixed with each iraq. other Esau is all that's over in there. iraq 
That's not in Mecca. Okay. How is Babylon Mecca and not Iraq? Brother, I just How? I just I just explained to you this. All of the Arabs over there. Arab means mixed. They are no, all no, no, no. You're telling me about together. people. What about geographical location, brother? Geographical right. location. Babylon right. is in Iraq. Mecca is in Saudi Arabia. Geographical location. How are they the same? Because according to scriptures, uh, mystery Babylon is Mecca. According to precepts upon precepts. Oh, wait a minute. It but is no, Mecca. Babylon is a geographical location that's in Iraq. So how is it Mecca? You see how your own argument, okay, just like you. it did in the case with the I'm oil, show it to you. works against you? And you see how what you say falls apart because it's not the truth? Now I'm going to show you something. You got Amos 1? Yeah. Show me Amos 1 real quick. Amos. Watch this. Go ahead. Amos 1, verse 11. Uh-huh. Thus saith the Lord. Uh-huh. For three transgressions of Edom. Of who? Three transgressions of Edom. Of Edom. Read. And for four. Read on. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. I will not Turn away the punishment thereof. Read on. Because he did cast off all pity. Uh huh. And his anger did tear perpetually. Uh huh. Uh, and he kept his wrath forever. Read on. Uh, where well, you at? Nine. So right? Verse nine. Uh -huh. Thus, verse nine. My bad. Thus saith the Lord: uh -huh. For three transgression of Tyrus, uh huh. And for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Uh huh. So as we see, this is a prophecy about Edom and about Tyrus. Read. Uh, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. When did the Hamitic Tyrians deliver up the whole captivity to Edom? When did that happen? Let's now go to Joel, the third chapter. When did this happen? Let's find out. You got history on that? You know when that happened? When did the Hamites sell us to the Edomites? You Do you, do you know anything about that? Huh? I mean, what does this got to do with the Hamites? Brother, when did the Hamites sell us to the Edomites? It's got to do with the Edomites, which is the topic of conversation. When did the Hamites sell us to the Edomites? When did the Hamites? They've been selling us. They've been selling us all through Torah. Okay, so when did they sell us to the Edomites? I can't give you the exact date. Boom. But I'm to, I told exactly. you that according to Torah. Exactly. I can, all right. I told so you now, according now, to Torah. That's, that's all right. I, I, know, I know you can't. So that's fine. Let's go to Joel. Joel chapter 3, verse 4. Uh huh. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Joel and Amos had the same prophecy against the same people, the people of Tyree. He said, What have you to do with me? And Amos, he said, You sold me to the Edomites. Watch this. Read. And all the coast of Palestine, uh -huh. will you render me a recompense? Read on. And if you recompense me swiftly and uh -huh. speedily, will I return your uh, re recompense upon your own head? Because you have taken my silver and gold uh -huh. and carried it away into your temples, my goodly and pleasant things. Read on. The children also of Judah uh -huh. and the children of Jerusalem. What did they do? Have you sold unto the Greeks? Unto the who? Unto the Greeks. This is the same prophecy. But it's calling them Edomites in one chapter and Grecians in another chapter. Do you know why that is? Because the Edomites went into Greece and assumed the identity of the people of Javan. That's why. That's right. Why else would the prophecy say that? Now let me give you the history on it via Encyclopedia Judaica. Edom appears sometimes in the Agadah referring to the actual Edomites and sometimes to the Romans who are identified with them. In the Bible, Bible, Edom is described as the eternal enemy of Israel. It cites Amos 1 and 11, who always opposed Israel. In, in addition, the fact that Rome, like Edom, had destroyed the temple, similarly of Edom compared to a pig with Rome, whom with the pig was the most important symbol. The allusion to Edom dwelling on high like an eagle and the fact that the eagle, too, was an important Roman symbol. And perhaps finally, even the similarity to the name Rome and the Romans in several verses that speak of Edom, Seir, and Esau. All these apparently combine to cause the application to Rome of the biblical reference to Edom, the eternal enemy of Israel. This ain't just me talking. These are scholars that substantiate this, right? And it's more. All I don't right. want to get into too many historical documents because I could do it all night. But the fact the fact remains that are, are Joel and Amos had the same prophecy. In one instance, it called them Grecians, and the other instance, it called them Edomites. Either way, those are the people that co-collaborated with the Hamites to take us into slavery. Absolutely not. And I'm I'm about to prove well, to you. Wait, oh, that's all right. The, the, Bible, the Bible lies. The Bible lies. History I, lies. It's watch okay. this. It's all right. Okay, so now watch this. Your hit. No, the Bible don't lie. It's just that your history don't line up with the bible and i'm gonna show it to you no, no that's a lie i'm gonna that's go to barashi 
chapter 10, Genesis chapter 10, verse 2. Now I'm gonna show hey, before you before the Edomites exist. Before I'm a, I'm a, the Edomites exist, I'm gonna I'm show you precept. I'm gonna show you precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. I ain't I ain't gotta go into all that extra. I just showed stuff. you Amos, I and I showed you Joel. Now, again, Amos, that was a completely different time period, and and the Book of Joel is talking about the Grecians, the Greeks. The Roman and Greece is completely different from Edom, and I'm going to show it to you. That history you, you just read is straight up lying. Don't line up with the Bible. Watch this. Genesis, or Barashi, chapter 10, verse 1. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were the <coughs> sons born after the flood. And the sons of Japheth, Gomar, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrese, and the sons of Gomar, Ashkenaz, which is the Ashkenazi Jews today that's, that stole our heritage, they're calling themselves Jewish, and it clearly gives you the dang on name right there, but you you call the Bible a lie still. Then it says this. Well, it it says, by, by that case, you're African-American. By that case, you're African-American, that's what you're called today. It says in Rapath, hold on, it says in Rapath and Togarma, and the sons of Javan, remember these names, Elisha and Tarshish, Kittum and the Danium. Now these are the Gentiles of the Isles. This is clear as day. Now let's get a precept to this. Now, so let, let's take a look at the historical archaeology of what these hold people on, look on. like. Uh, the I prehistoric people of Javan. Off. Let's take a look at what the prehistoric people of Javan look like. Those don't look nothing like no white people to me. I don't know about you, but they look like they're damn near your color. They don't look yeah. like any white people. This is according to the history of the peoples of those lands. At right. what point did these people become white? Can you explain it to me? Okay, so now, just read Genesis chapter 10. I hope you remember those names. We read Gomar, Magog, Madai, and Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. We clearly see that. Now, let's, get the, let's go back over here to about the Grecians. Uh, Joel chapter 3, verse uh, 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. So now we see the Grecians here. Now let's get another precept. Let's go to Ezekiel 27, verse 13. Mm. Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 13. The father is going to give them by name who it was that sold us to the Greek, who it was that was uh, selling us, that was buying us and everything from these nations. Ezekiel 27, 13. Javan, Tubal, and Meshach. They were thy merchants. They traded the purses of men and vassals of brass in the market. Ooh, it gives you by name that the Grecians was and, and I just gave you Edom by I, name was in Joel chapter one, three, and verse you can't give me any history you by that name. proves that. You can't do it. it so gave let's you take by a look name. at the people of Javan. Let's take a look at the people of Javan and Tubal. I can do name. this all night. Those are not white folks. By Those name. are not white people. So you got to explain to me when they turned white and took us into slavery, please. I'm waiting. I have to explain when they turn white and took you, brother. That's a picture. I'm showing you according to the book. That's a how, what is a picture worth? Can anybody tell me what the oh. pic? A thousand words. The ancient artifacts in Europe show the original <laughs> Europeans were people of color. They show that, but you're telling me they're white people. But that don't make no sense because the okay, evidence so now. that's hidden within under the layers of rocks, the archaeology doesn't agree with that. So I want to know when the hell okay, these so people became white. Right. Okay, so I just showed you showed you the precept of Joel about the Greeks. And I also showed you in 10, I gave you by name of Japan. Telling you that these are the Greeks in Ezekiel 27 13. Explain this to me. Explain this to me. How in Joel we clearly see that they were selling like merchants of which was the children of Israel. Then I show you in Ezekiel 27 13 by name who it was. Explain this to me. And I showed you in Amos where Edom is also named amongst them. But you can't tell me in history where we were sold to the Edomites. You have no idea. Then I show you the historical documents that the original people of Javan and Tubal were people of color. But you're saying that we were sold to white people. I'm saying how we were sold to white people was the people of Edom went into Europe and started to assume the identities of the people of Europe. Okay? And the history works cohesively with that, showing you that the people of Europe were people of color. We just showed document after document.
Okay, or so pottery. Any any historian knows if you want to find out anything about a culture, an ancient culture, you find the pottery. Right. Ask any historian. You find that pottery. All right. When you find that pottery and they tell you these people are white people and all I see is black people with afros. I say, wait a minute. The original people of this land could not have possibly been white folks. How is that? It's not possible. So they were named by name. You went to a prophecy and said they were named by name, and I showed you that the exact same thing it said about all those European lands, it says about Edom. So how were we sold to the Edomites if we were sold to the Europeans? Come on, man. So once again, I ask you a question, and you still have not answered my question. According I answered to Ezekiel, your question. Look, I answered no, your no, question no, with precept upon no, precept. According to Ezekiel, look, period. Okay, look, according, look, according to Ezekiel. Amos one. Can you answer that? No, you okay, couldn't. So, you sat there looking dumbfounded when you couldn't tell me okay, when so we were going to go to the Edomites. So let's not play according that game. To, uh, according to Ezekiel, according to Ezekiel, chapter 27, verse 13, this is Joel showing you that, that it give you by name who these people were. So what about group, Amos, bro? Was, so that what was about Amos? He gave, he gave us Edom bro, by name I'm asking Amos. You. What about, I'm, I'm asking, asking you. I just okay. told you. Okay, so now. Now I'm asking you, where is Edom at in that? Where? Why is it Edom being mentioned? Why is not Edom being mentioned here? B because in Amos 1, it mentions, it, it says the exact same thing. Uh, Ezekiel 27, Joel 3. No, but it, Amos, and Amos, hold on, wait, Amos wait. 1. No, brother, Ezekiel 1, I mean Amos 1, Ezekiel 27. And Joel 3 are all talking about the sin of Tyree, yay or nay. <laughs> yeah, Amos 1. But once again, Amos, well, it's all talking Amos about 1 Tyree. is a completely oh, different. Wait a minute. It's telling Amos, us it's Amos 1 is completely at one time. Then it's saying he sold us the Edomites in the other time. Which one is it? I don't get it. Okay. And it's a different. It's I different, can show you the history. Is Ezekiel and, and, and isn't Ezekiel and Joel different? Slave trade. Isn't Ezekiel I, and Joel different though? Okay, now you you asked me a question. You asked me a you asked me you asked me a question, and I'm trying to answer your question. You asked me when when did when did the Hamites sell us to the Arabs? Now I can show you the to the Arab slave trade. No, no, the I asked you sold when us to did the Hamites, which was worse, sell us to the Edomites. Now you've I, sat I, there and thought about it, and now he's like, oh, boom, the Arab slave trade which was Hamites being enslaved by Arabs, right? Absolutely no not. That's yeah. not. What the brother, what the brother is asking not. is, when did, when did- It was not Hamites. The Arab slave trade now that he didn't have some time to think about it. The Sub-Saharan slave trade. That's what, that's your answer? The, the Sub-Saharan slave trade of the Hamites. <laughs> that's when the Israelites got sold to the Edomites. That's probably. what you're saying? Absolutely. Uh, the, Hamites, the, Hamites, the, Hamites the, sold us, the Hamites sold us to the Arabs during the sub-Saharan slave trade, correct? Absolutely. That's what that was Negroes. Okay. Are Hamites Negroes? Absolutely not. Okay. Wait, so wait a minute. So how do you know that those were Israelites that got sold in the transatlantic slave trade? What proof? Because the it's it's proof and it's facts to the point of you even see um Esau, which is the Arab nation, they they are the ones that uh, taught the European Japheth the slave trade and the slave epics that showed them this stuff. So when you deal when you deal with the sub-Saharan slave trade, this slave trade was worse than the year slave trade. Okay, but 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 the kind the thing is though, how do we know that those were Israelites that were on the markets? I know I know this was Israelites. I know this was Israelites. This have nothing to do with Hamites. I know this was Israelites. Well, wait a minute. You so, dig into how the do research, you know that though? You're just you I, know it. I go into the article how? and the history behind it. If I go into the article, if I go into the if I go into the article, and it'd be too much too long to sit up here and read it out. But once again, there's many people that even teach that those there's people that that teach that people that's within the Africa continent. Hamites. You see what I'm saying? So that that's another thing that's going on and circulating amongst the Hebrew community, which is completely okay. against what I teach. I don't believe that all people that's on the on the continent of Africa is Hamites. You feel what I'm saying? I know I got brothers and sisters that's over there, and our brothers and sisters being tortured, raped, robbed, and murdered every single day amongst this captivity. Esau, the okay. Arab nations, that was Negroes. Over a hundred million of okay. us slaughtered. 
Okay. Let, let, let's move on. Let's move on. That was, that was good. Uh, my next question to you would be kind of like a logic, <laughs> a logical question more, more so. Um, why, who, who, who can all, who do, who do, who does all the nations of the world have as a, a, a common enemy? Who can all nations agree that they have a problem with? I can't hear you, Walk. You're like breaking up bad. Who do who does all the nations on the planet agree that they have a problem with? It? One common enemy. One common in, enemy. What do you mean? I can't, nations, I can't hear you, brother. You're breaking. Do we? Let me scoot over here until he gets back. Does he? Do, do we all have a? Do all, does all the nations on the planet have one common enemy or a problem with one particular group of individuals or nation? I, brother, you're breaking up bad. I hear you, brother. See if they can hear me on the live stream. See if brothers can hear me on the live stream. Mic check, mic check, one two on the live stream. Mic check, one I can't, two. I can't hear you. I can hear you like I can hear you, but you're breaking up. Right, I'm. I'm a, loud and clear. Loud and clear, loud and clear. Well, loud and clear, loud and clear. Okay. Um, what I what I wanted to ask is why why does every nation on the planet have a problem with the so-called white man? I mean, because uh, according to um, Genesis, let me get scripture to answer that question. Genesis uh, chapter 9, verse 27. He says, And Elohim shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So we clearly see he's talking about basically Japheth taking people lands and dwelling there. See what I'm saying? So this is prophecy showing about Japheth being enlarged and also Jap dwelling in our tents with the Shem, which is in Jerusalem. That's where you got the European Jews at today. Okay. So, so that's why all the nations hate them. So all the nation all the nations hate Japheth because re read that verse one more time. Now that the brother came back, I want him to be a part of the, the conversation. Read that verse one more time. Genesis chapter 9, verse 27. Elohim shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Right. So when it says enlarge Japheth, it's 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 a blessing, correct? Not not no, him this, stealing people's land, right? No, this enlarges this it's it's a it's a blessing, but it's also they have been take they took lands over. That's what enlarge means to take over, take lands. Enlarge means to take land? Going. That's what okay, the right, hold on. Doing. Let's take a look at that. That's Genesis 9 and what? 27. 27. It means to take lands. All right. That's um, what enlarge means, to make great. All right. Okay, okay. No, but to take land. It means to take lands? Yeah, that's what Japheth did, enlarge. That's how they became great. They was taking land. So, hold on. So, enlarge, enlarge, enlarge means to, to take lands. Okay, all right. Uh, let's go to the word enlarge here. It's uh, Pata in the Hebrew, Strong's G6601. It says to be spacious, to be open, to be wide. I don't see anything about stealing lands in, in the definition. So, no, it, 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 it doesn't mean to, to, to take lands. We, we, we ain't going to do that. All right. But um, uh, as far as. Um, no, I, my, my question was why does everybody, all the nations on the planet, have one common enemy? And they hate, they hate Esau. They, I'm sorry. They hate the white man. They hate the European man. Let's go. Is quick. that not, is that not prophecy? Um, on, on um, that note. Absolutely me, not. Because you guys think, you guys think Esau is the white man. The Bible, right, let's just the, say the white people though. Without being Esau. Roman, let's just say white people. Ro okay. So, so it's okay. Roman but I'm just, I'm just saying this. I'm, I'm just saying this. Romans 9 and 13 says he hated Esau. So the, the 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 world people actually hate Esau, which is the beast. Uh, yeah, and I and I agree. But you, what, did he admitted that people hate white people the most. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. This is let's get this Psalms thirty seven and thirty five. 
I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a Green Bay tree. This sounds like what you say white people are doing, but it calls them the wicked. We know pursuant to Malachi 1, Esau is called the wicked. Then we know according to Job 9 and 24, it said the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. White people are clearly are the most prominent people on earth, and they cover the faces of the judges thereof. They painted Christ as a white man. So again, like every time that you bring up a point in the way you formulate your logic, it's still, this is how I know Esau is the white man, because even when you employ that he's not, your logic still leads you back to the white man. That's right. So it has to be the white man. All right, so according to 924, show me Esau there. Brother, I showed you the wicked. You describe what white people do. I showed you a verse in the Bible that goes along with that and refers to the people that are doing that as wicked. I then reference Malachi 1, where the Edomites are called wicked. I then reference Job 9 and 24, where it says the wicked cover the faces of the judges thereof. We know that that has something to do with the painting of a white image of Christ. The Arab had no motivation of painting a white Christ. Absolutely none. You see what I'm saying? If that was the case, he wouldn't have pushed it. He would have just pushed Islam. He wouldn't need to push Catholicism. So we know that the white man covered the face of the judge. We know he's the most prominent and richest people on the planet Earth. We know he's spreading himself abroad and stealing lands. We know that's wickedness. And we know Edom is called the border of wickedness. And then we know in the next verse, it calls us the border of the Lord in righteousness. So he's the polar opposite to us. Who's the polar opposite of the black man in America or the black man across the globe? Not the Arab. Okay, it so, would be the white man. So so once again, my understanding of Job 9, you just went on the rant. Job 9.24 is referring to anyone being wicked. The earth has no, been given listen, to anyone look, 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 who's being point, wicked. Listen, listen, and hold, let me hold on. The, and let first me off, Esau, hold on. Esau is not mentioned there. Now, when you went to the border of wickedness about Esau, once again, I agree with that, but it's not the white man. Okay, okay, no worries. Um, because that's gonna come out anyway when we uh Well, that, it doesn't necessarily prove our point, but <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. It's almost double. <laughs> uh, no, right. um, Obadiah 1, uh, verse 2. It says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, thou art greatly despised. Now, why, why do all the, like I said, I brought that up because it's saying that all the heathen nations are going to despise this, want this, these Edomites, whoever they are. And you agreed that all the nations on the planet have one common enemy that's going around fucking with everybody. Excuse my language. So how how do you how do you fit this in uh, to the Arabs? Obadiah one and two. Because basically, Does everybody um, hate the Arabs. <laughs> Good. So like you said that again, brother. You got cut uh, out. Basically. All right, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you where. I'm gonna show you why this is the Arabs. Um, let's start at. Um, I'm gonna read verse two again, and I'm gonna read on down. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thy heart have deceived thee, and thou, though thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though, though is the eagle, and set his nest among the stars, then it's well around. Let's go to um. Let's go to verse six. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Now let's see. He's about to basically start giving you the locations and showing you that his hidden place has been sought up. Um, let's go to verse. Um, but, but brother, brother, hold on. Let question. me finish. If it's his hidden finish. place, hold on, hold on. Y'all keep cutting if me it's off. His hidden place, let me, but it's the same place me, that he's always been. I got how was it hidden? Let me. Let me. Huh? If it's his hidden finish. place, I. Uh, if, if it's his hidden place, but this is the same place he's always lived, then how is it hidden? Because he bent, they already showed the spot, period. And I'm going to show you right here, the next verse, but it shows hidden, you his though. hidden place. Being, but it's hidden, though. It shows you his hidden place, hidden place in the next spot being sought out. It says, that mighty man, O Timon, and shall be this, every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. So it gives you a location again. This day, my brothers but, and sisters, what's if you are about, out there, please if, hold on, if hold this on, brother. Is where the hold on, brother. Have always dwell. What's hidden about that? 
what's hidden about about what the locations yeah well, there's nothing hidden about a location where they've always been there's nothing hidden or mystical about the fact they've always been there absolutely it, it is hidden about that and that's why the next verse it clearly shows well, wait a minute, where wait a they minute, are wait a minute. hold on hold on, hold on. Now, let me ask you a question right let, let me ask you a question right if the police said that I was I had a warrant out for my arrest and I was on a hideout and they found me at the crib how was I hiding they know where I live they knew right where to go to get me that would have to be where I'm not usually so at in order same? for my location to be hidden so I can use that same logic if I'm dwelling in I'm dwelling in Mount Seir in Mecca Esau's location in the mountains and the, for me just like Saddam just like um osama bin laden just like these people hiding in the holes and hiding in the mountains they didn't find them right away they clearly was hidden so I okay okay no 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 and and that that makes more sense that makes a whole lot more sense but at the same time it's talking about their secret place then it names their secret place Absolutely. it's not saying that they're hiding in some hole that nobody can find it it said their secret place is mount seer so if their secret place is mount seer then how in the hell is it what's hidden about it? like that's i i don't understand and, and uh, you know wh what you said was far more sensible than you know what i what i first perceived from you but at the same time it still it still doesn't add up but, but go go ahead brother okay so so my question my question to you is this i constantly touch 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 basics on these locations i showed you southeast palestine i showed you mount seer i'm showing you t-man and d-dan saudi arabia and you're still and his question well and you you showed me that mystery babylon is mecca but babylon is in baghdad so i mean again even what you're saying it it, it doesn't add up i'm saying it's referring to these people and where they are right. now and it wouldn't be the same as their ancient uh location which is why they're hidden that's what i would say so it is, Brother, it is. I can, go ahead. We, we were still hold Brother, on i can, we I can on clearly see. You have an answer yet we're still there so let's not I move can, from there go ahead uh, no, you 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 gave an answer earlier, and you said that's my answer. Take it or leave it. We're giving you answers. Well, we feel like it's validated and substantiated by even your logic. So we're saying take it or leave it. And I'm asking you to prove to me how the Arabs are greatly despised amongst every nation. How they are the common enemy of every nation. They are the common enemy amongst the nation. They're behind the scenes. But but you wait wait a minute. You told me. That the Saudi Arabians are hiding behind the white people controlling them. How are they the common enemy of the white man and they control him? Okay, so why why so so explain why I went over there and took over there over, over that over the, the the location and everything that's taking place over there. Hold on, say that one more time, King. I said, why why didn't the white man like why are the white man's constantly going over there to Saudi Arabia? They're not making war with them. Why is that? They're in bed with them. They 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 get down together. Man, they they know they know they can't mess with Saudi Arabia, bro. This is facts. Well, I mean that that that's that. Uh, how? What what thermonuclear power? How many nuclear warheads did the Saudis possess? Do, wait a minute. Do the Saudis even have nuclear capabilities? No. I can't I can't answer that question. I I never been to well, Saudi then Arabia. How can you tell me that the white the, man the who got all the so nukes on the damn bullshit. earth, who got an army that go into anybody country and take it over? How in the hell can't the white man mess with the Saudis when the okay, Arab put so together explain. a damn bomb in his garage with nails in it and kill two people? The white man blow up the whole goddamn Japan, but they can't mess with the Saudis. All right. Okay, so <laughs> so so, so once, <laughs> once again, explain to me, explain to me why they haven't done it yet because they're allies we just explained it why would you go blow up somebody who you cool with they're still oppressing mm. them mm. Mm. i okay. mean which which is more sensible so, i'm not like going to go and make war with my ally or i'm afraid of somebody who doesn't have a quarter of the weaponry that i have go ahead right. now okay, okay so but but the white man go but the white man go and drop bombs on everybody else but they won't go over yeah, he, he sure Saudi does. Arabia. you ever heard of the international monetary fund you ever heard of the world bank the saudis have a rothschild bank the only people that the white man attacks are people that don't have a rothschild bank that's it that's why they trying to mess with syria that's why they did it with iraq 
It has to do with the monetary system that they utilize to control the whole earth and got nothing to do with no damn Arab. So if you got and my nothing, bank, and, and, why am I going to go in there and attack you future and pass my money over there? Don't make no kind of sense. Go and, ahead. And everything I, that you stated, everything that you stated, I showed you future prophecy and everything okay. showing okay, you the okay. locations. For sure. Okay. But you well, can't we deny that. That's you can't so deny your it. answer was that the, all the nations hate the Arabs because they are the ones behind the scenes. You were breaking up a little bit. All the nations hate the Arabs because they're the ones behind the scenes. Absolutely. Huh? I'm absolutely not. I'm showing you according to the book, according to the Bible. And y'all said he hate Esau. And that's exactly what stands and what is written. Hold on now, bro, bro, bro. Okay, okay. I, I want to make sure this is understood, right? You assert that the Arabs are the Esau is the Arabs. We assert that Esau is the white man, right? So you go into, when we have a different understanding of who Esau is, you have to explain to me how that fits the era. That's what you have to do. That's the burden of the question that we're asking you. You can't just say, what well, the I Bible just, says, the, the Lord question. hates Esau and Esau is the Arab without substantiating how the, the Arabs are hated. Substantiated several times how Esau or the white man is well, hated, fitting the description. And you even and, agree and I, to that. You can't explain how the Arab is hit. You can't do it. You haven't done it yet. We're asking I've you, already, please do I've, it. I've already, okay. I've already look, answered your question. Look. I showed you precept upon precept, showing you locations, everything. Show, show me how. Well in there. Show me how the Arab is hated by every. Show me how the Arab is hated by every nation in a quick and simple answer, my beloved. The Arabs is hated by every single nation. Yeah. Where does it say that? Read it. Obadiah 1 and 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Among the nations, you are greatly despised. Among all the, among the nations. Exactly. So what is this referring to the prophecy in the time that according to the Torah? This is this is the book of Obadiah, which you said was future prophecy earlier when you read it. Right, but the whole it's not future prophecy okay well so when did all the, when did everybody hate the arabs i mean it shows it all through the scripture of esau and 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 the wickedness that he's doing he said okay so are, are the border of the wicked i have go in obadiah and tell me when it's past prophecy and future prophecy can you do that can you rightly divide the book of obadiah for me please it's only one chapter yeah, but I can I can go into the book and show you that when you can when you answer my question about the location that I gave you showing that okay, this so, is so, clearly so, so Southeast Palestine. Okay, this is clearly in the Middle East. You can't do it. How, right. how are you making this? I understand that you can't do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Answer the question. And you can't do it again. Another question that you can't answer. All right, Sway. How? Sway, it's all right. Sway, Sway, Sway. It's cool. Sway, calm down. Sway, it's all right. I get it. I get it. You ain't got you ain't got the answers. I get it. It's cool. Look, it's cool. That's fine. That's fine. Let's let's keep it on it. Let's keep it on the intellectual <laughs> level. We got a good audience. We're getting good feedback right now with both parties, with both sides. That's right. So we're gonna move on from right, that. But, but, you said you said uh, I'm gonna accept your answer. You said that all the nations hated them in the past. The Book of Obadiah is partially fulfilled, partially unfulfilled. That's 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 your final answer. Absolutely, because I can show you. Uh, it, it it also talks about the destruction of Edom, and it and, ha and okay. it has not. Okay. Um. Now, my my next question is: We know how the Bible says that God hates Esau. Uh, he's going to exterminate him. Uh, in many more um, atrocious prophecies, aiming and gearing towards Esau. Why Why does God hate the Arabs and how are the Arabs our the Israelites worst enemy and God's worst enemy how are the Arabs the Israelites worst enemy yeah because the Bible says that's our that's our worst enemy I mean but when we read the book of our sheet we read all throughout you know history of the book of the Bible we thou and Jacob and the 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 problem that was taken of the hatred that was going 
going on, all the wickedness that was taking place, you know what I'm saying, the jealousy, the, all this stuff all through the book. It's a, it's a right, simple King. question. All, all right, King, King, but he, he, here's, here, here's what I want you to understand, right, and why we asking this, right? Like, you know, we teach on the streets, right? So when I'm on the streets, and, like, if I read that, like, about, you know, Esau, Envy, and Jacob, I'm going to break it down to get somebody to understand it by saying, can't you bear witness to the white man's envy towards us and his evil towards us, right? So I'm using practical examples that we all can bear witness to and liken it unto the scriptures to gain the understanding of. I want you to use a practical example in the world toward the, uh, the Arabs' relationship with us to make your point. You see what I'm saying? C can you do that? I mean, I could go to Romans 9.13. It's simple. Now, ah, ah, ah. Here, here's what you, like, I can read scriptures and say that it's talking about the white man. The same you can say it's talking about the Arab. The difference between you and me is I'm going to give practical, modern-day examples that everybody can agree with to prove my point. I'm asking you to give me these examples that prove your point. You asking me, first I was asked one question. The first question I was asked was, why does Yah hate the white man? Or why does why does the father hate Esau? Esau. That was why does he hate was... Esau? Why does he hate the Arab? Right. Yeah, According I, to you, and, and I'm about you to say answer Esau that. the Arab. Right, the Arabs, and I'm about to answer that. No, That's but my question is, can you give me an example that because you're going to read a scripture and I'm going to say that's talking about the white man and you're going to say that's talking about the Arab. I'm going to give an example to prove it's talking about the white man. Can you give one to prove that it's talking about the Arab? I already proved that. I showed you many scriptures no, 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 showing no, you no, that no, it's no, the no, Arab. No, no, no. Show me how the Arab some... is our worst enemy. Show yeah, it to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Look, 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 look. Scratch the first question. Show us how the Arabs our, our I'm sorry, our worst enemy and God's worst enemy. Show, show me an example that I can bear witness to that I can't deny. Let me see. Uh, Amos. Let's go to Amos. Amos chapter 9, verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and all of the heathen, which are called by my name, saith Yahuwah, doeth this. Clear as day. So wait, but I'm saying, can you show me an example of how the Arab are the black man's worst enemy? Are the black man's worst enemy? It's all through the, without book, the really? Bible. Without the Bible, can you show me an example that you can liken unto the Bible? Without the Bible, I want you to make the Bible come to come to life. Bible. So you want me to go outside of the word and and give? No, 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 no. He said without the Bible. That's not what I meant. He didn't understand what I meant. I want matter of fact. Give me. I'm gonna show. I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. Can I give you an example? So so let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, the, the what, let's see one of the reasons, right? Here. Let's give an example. Um, the terrorist, right? Um, ISIS. Um, ISIS is ISIS real? Oh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let, let me finish. Let let me finish. Um, ESAU ahead, setting King, up. ESAU setting up against the Roman Empire. There are videos that showing this stuff that that they are they are going to spread like a locust and take over Rome and 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 the rest of the Europe's empire. Empire. Um, they are already have been set in, in um they have already been set in certain lands like uh, Europe and everything they have taken over these lands. So this is why I, this is why many nations and also our these people and also according to the Hera slave trade as well. So so you're telling me ISIS, which there's a, a plethora of documentation proving to you that ISIS was set up by United States government officials and pictures of United States government officials with ISIS with masks on saying they're ISIS and it's a white man with a U with United States Army tattoo on. But ISIS, right? See, this is what I mean, happens but, but when people, again, the like, reason why guys believe that Arabs are the white man is because of a, 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 a doctrine, an ideology propagated by the white man like called Islamophobia. They want you to be fearing that Muslim when the white man has been the biggest terrorist of all time for the last half a millennia, but I'm supposed to believe that the damn Arab is the biggest terrorist? Give me the book. Give me, give me Genesis 32 and 10.
Give me Genesis 32 and 10. And once again, so ISIS, like, guys, I never said, ISIS put us I never slavery. said that the ISIS European is shooting me down every I never damn said day. that the white man. ISIS is raping my damn mama. ISIS is doing all that, right? That is, that is absolutely. Yeah, but once this, again, the I white never... man wants you to be afraid of ISIS. Let me ask you something. How many black people died in the September 11th attacks? How many black people? I don't know. I can't give you that number. Less than 30 out of 3,000. They they're they the white man's worst enemy. They're not your worst enemy. Give me the book of Genesis. Give me Genesis 32 and 10. Read. Book of Genesis so, 32. So, but one more. 11. Go ahead. Hold on. Let me read the Bible. Read. Genesis 32 and 11. Uh -huh. Deliver me, I pray thee. Our forefather Jacob got on his hands and knees. And he said, deliver me, I pray thee. He prayed to Yahweh. Read. From the hand of my brother. He said, deliver me from the hand of my brother. Read. From the hand of Esau. From the hand of Esau. He was afraid of this man. Why was he afraid? Read. For I fear him. For I fear him. Why was he afraid? The same way you're afraid every time a goddamn cop gets behind you. Read. Least he will come and smite Lest me. Lest he kill me, read. And the mother with the children. And the mother with the children. This white man has killed you. He's killed your children. He's killed your women. When the hell did the Arab do it? I just, we just spent 500 years here getting murdered by the white man, but my worst enemy on the earth is the goddamn Arab that the white man does attack so, and blames him. So what him. about... Right? Come so, on, man. So, so what about the Negroes? So, so what about, so what about the Negroes? It's in Saudi Arabia being murdered and, and enslaved, hard bondage uh, slave. I, 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 I would Arabia. say, prove to me that those are Israelites. Well, you know, and that's why I say, you know, it, it's just going to be agree to agree to disagree. And once again, that you cool. ran to you ran to Genesis thirty two and ten, and then and and talk about basically uh, Jacob and Edom and stuff. Jacob being afraid of them and stuff. Man, it clearly shows what's going on in this scripture. And once again, I have gave you concrete locations. So no matter when you try and, to and, and, to your, and the concrete and, location that you gave me from Babylon, you still, still don't, Babylon. So how am I to trust you your concrete with locations? The how am I to trust that? Your stuff and still I don't line up with the Bible. That people are referred to by the cities that they lived in, though they don't live there anymore. We showed you all of that. So what you can't okay, give so me show, so show any you have not showed me according to scripture. You have not showed me according to scripture. That, well, the, that, the, that Esau does not live in their land no more. Show me in the book okay. that Esau does not live in their land anymore. Show me that Esau me lives in Mecca. Can you show it to me? See, now you're asking. Show me that Babylon now you're asking, Mecca. Show me Babylon is Mecca. Show now, it to you're me. Asking, now you're asking another, you're asking a question with a question because you know you can't, you can't show it. No, show me according well, to the scripture. Just did, listen, show you me just try to do it. It happened to you. Esau. Now you're trying to call it out like it's wrong, but you've been doing it. Sway, Brother, stop it. Show me ahead, according right, to ahead. the scripture, Esau ahead, getting ahead, taken ahead. out of the land mass that the show Bible tells you. Show me according to the scripture that Mecca is Babylon. Can you show it to me? Can you this show it to me? I, I can show it to you. Yeah, let me show it to you. Show, show it to me. Because, wait a minute, Babylon is a concrete location in Iraq. Can you show me how Saudi Arabia okay, so is Iraq? See. Can you show it to me? All right, let's see. Please. Absolutely. Let's go to... um. Let's go to um Isaiah chapter 21, verse 9. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just give you mystery Babylon locations. That's it. But well, wait a minute. <laughs> Mecca. No, don't, no, 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 no. You asked me to show you something. Don't get scared now. I'm going to show already it to you. Read it. <laughs> Ain't nobody scared. It doesn't make sense that you. one city is another because city. Because one go thing ahead, I noticed up. about read. you, one thing I noticed about you, one thing I noticed about you is that you don't accept the locations that is written in the book and then you say that these locations they were you, taken away from because you, you say, say babylon you say that is that location, that's not the location you say that these locations the was taken but away from either. but you cannot prove in the bible that Esau you can't lost prove in the his bible life. mecca is babylon you can't, you can't so do now, it you I'm haven't done it you haven't held you ever came close to doing I'm it i'm on the show so stop playing okay so so you want me to show it to you or not all right, all right this here's here's what we want to let, know no, no, let him read that because he's going to read about Babylon and he's going to tell you it's Mecca when Babylon's in Iraq. Read. Okay. Right. All right. Let's go. The, this is the fall. This is the fall of Babylon in uh, Isaiah chapter 21. We all know this future prophecy. All right. Uh, Isaiah 21 and 9. And behold, 
Here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And the graven of images of her gods he have broken unto the ground. O oh, my threshing and the corn of my floor, that which have I've have I heard of Yahoo of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, have I declared unto you the burden of Duma, location. Once again, when I'm done, you're gonna have to answer these locations, brother. The burden of Duma. He calleth to me out of seer location. You're going to have to answer to. Then it's what of the night. Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, also the night, if ye will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. The burden upon Arabia. On Arabia. The burden of Arabia. Let's continue. In Arabia. In the forest in Arabia. Let's continue. Shall ye lodge, O ye traveling companies of the Danium. Mm. In the inhabitants of the land of Tima brought water to him. Another location you got to answer to, buddy. Brought water to him that was thirsty. They prevented with their bread. Let. Let's get a precept. Through precept, we get understanding. All right, let's go to continue to 16. For thus, thus have, have Yahuwah said unto me, within a year, according to the years of the hireling, and all the glory of Kadar shall fail. Another location. <coughs> Buddy, get on your phone and check those locations out. Let's get a precept to that. Okay, so all right, remember it says oh, Babylon wait, is Babylon. falling, is falling. Precept Babylon is a location 40, verse 8. Babylon is a location in Iraq, not in Saudi Arabia. It is not Hold on, let's so, continue. No, location, you, location. you asked me to show you, so I'm gonna show you You're a real estate agent now. Go you asked me to show you. You asked me to show you, and I'm gonna show you according to the book. Now I want to see you. Wiggle out of this one. Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. He says, and therefore followed another another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, it's fallen. Same thing we read in, in Isaiah chapter 21, verse 11. Babylon is fallen, it's fallen, the great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of a wrath of her fornication. And we clearly see Saudi Arabia is behind the scene. All the nations is is wine. We clearly see it. We clearly see that. Let me continue. That's clearly you seen, ask, right? Ask me to show you. I'm gonna show it to you. You bro, ask me bro, to show bro. it. I'm gonna show it to you. But, All right. You so said, we just read Isaiah chapter 21. The precept to that. Also, Revelation chapter 14, showing you Babylon is fallen. I also gave you locations to where Babylon is located. Period. Clear as day. Now you gotta show me according to scripture. Show me this America. Hold on, Babylon. Show me America. Wait, wait, Babylon. According to the Bible, is in Iraq. So you just named a bunch of places to tell me that Babylon is in Iraq, but you've been saying since the top of the show it's in Mecca. So as soon as you can get your thoughts and your interpretations in order, then we'll deal with them. Well, Until then, they are not, they're not intelligible questions that you're once asking. Once again, the point, like, the like I is, said, brother, look, the point like is, I is, said, is that, I, I, like I said, no being it's America. Okay, you're harping on geographical locations, but the fact is 1,000% that Iraq is in, I'm oh, sorry, Babylon, Babylon is in Iraq, but you're saying Babylon is in Mecca. So, saying what we are saying essentially that these places uh, can be spiritual locations. That's what you're saying. Hence to why we bring out Revelation now. 11 and 8, the great city, which is spiritually <coughs> Sodom in, I'm sorry, the great city, which is spiritually Sodom in Egypt. Now we know these are not actual locations, but they're what? Spiritual locations. Hold on, wait, wait, Again. Sodom, Sodom yeah. hold on. Wait, the, it's spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Now let's take a look Terrible, at this document. Dog. Saudi Arabia Terrible. has no laws against Doc. discrimination on the basis Terrible. of sexual orientation or gender identity. The Gulf corporate countries, which Saudi Arabia is a member of, announced plans to ban LGBT foreigners from entering Gulf countries. They don't want homos to come into their country, yet they are spiritually Sodom. Absolutely. Esau is the most profane fornicator, according to the book of Hebrews 12 and 16, but they hate fornication in the land okay, of Saudi also, Arabia. But, but I can also show you. I, I can on, also prove, I can also <laughs> prove much fornication and homosexuality taking place in Saudi Arabia as well. And once again, you told me to show you that it's Mecca. And I just read to you right out the book. And you sat up here and denied it. 
Isaiah 21, verse 13. Show me he Mecca says the burden Babylon. Upon... Can you show it to me? You didn't show me that. You didn't show, me you didn't show it to me. All right, Saudi so you Arabia. can do whatever you want. Let's move on I to the next I told part. You. Because this you haven't you. showed Babylon. me Babylon was Mecca. Babylon is okay, Babylon, I just showed it and that's in okay, Iraq. Okay, I just showed it to you. That's in Iraq. Okay, so let me show it to you. Okay, so let me show it to you. Isaiah chapter 22. The burden upon Arabia. In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge, O ye traveling companies of the Danium. Where is Arabia okay, at, brother? Hold, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is Iraq a part of Arabia? Iraq is within the, the landmass of Arabia. Arabia. So, so if Babylon, if Iraq is within the landmass of Arabia and Babylon is in Iraq, how does it then become Mecca? Brother, I just gave you. I okay. just gave no, you no, no. Iraq is in Arabia. Iraq okay, so, is in Arabia. So, so Iraq is, is in I'm Arabia. Saying. Well, if Iraq is in Arabia, how does Babylon transfer locations? How does the geographical get sure. picked up and put in Brother, the bottom I'm, of the Dead Peninsula said, in Arabia? How does that happen? It doesn't I happen. Said, what I you're said, saying does not add up and make sense. I said, you have a, a logical fallacy going on, and you have a cognitive dissonance in your interpretation of the Bible. So we can move on. Go ahead. Malachi. Okay, okay but I just showed we you. I just showed you according we're gonna, to. We're gonna have to disagree. We're gonna just disagree. To, we're gonna agree to disagree okay, on that. But at least, think, at least think, let me get my. You think at least Baghdad, let me get my other scripture out. Baghdad is, is, is Mecca. You think Baghdad is Mecca? Mecca is Baghdad, which is a geog a geographic a geographical no, no, no. location. I, this is what I said. I said Mecca. I said Mecca is. So we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to the next point. That I was going to add Arabia. Let's go to Malachi. Let's go to Malachi, so we could so we could no, continue. Because I wasn't done. We, we want to, but look, look, look. According we to wanna, Isaiah chapter two, we want to continue to get through these questions without strife and Okay, contention. but let me let me prove my, my bully me. You ain't gonna point. bully we're me. Not gonna rebuttal, we're not going to rebuttal. We're not. We're not going to rebuttal. Point. You're not going to bully. Me. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we're not going to rebuttal your point, but you can prove it. Go I, ahead. Well, you, exactly. You can't rebuttal. You can't rebuttal Yah's word. Okay, Isaiah just chapter just 21, focus. verse 20. Go ahead, the, right, desert, go ahead. The, the burden of the desert of the sea, as the whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it cometh from the desert, from the terrible land. Then it also speaks about the Red Sea. So explain to me. What is what explain land to me is how the desert the is blessed sea? with the dew of heaven? Can you explain to me how the, the desert is blessed because with this, the dew of heaven? This whole scripture, this whole scripture, this whole scripture is referring to mystery Babylon the Great. So explain to me what C is next to Mecca. Explain to me what C. You y'all ain't you gonna hear, answer. Bro? Yeah, he's there. He's there. I thought I thought he was frozen. You answer. What C? What C is next to Mecca? That's the um, Arabian Peninsula is down there. <clears throat> Oh, so that's not the that's not the red. You said that's not what? Say that one more time, Ken. The Red Sea. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Said, what's the red, next yeah, the Red Sea. The Red Sea. Yeah, it's there. It's there. It's there. Okay, so now I gave you I gave you according to Isaiah twenty one. I gave you the location that it, it clearly gave you, which is Arabia, which is Mecca, and it also even gave you a sea that's next to Mecca. Okay. Well. Okay. All right. We'll agree to disagree. Uh, okay. Okay. So back on back on my. Uh, Another logical question, and then we'll have a last we'll have a last uh, a last question after this. I think we wrap things up pretty good here. Um, why is uh, I'm sorry? Who has done more wickedness to the Israelites um, between the white man and the what? Arabs? Who has done more wickedness to the Israelites between the white man and the Arabs? The Arab, the Arab slave trade, so however slave trade. Okay, so um, who were who were the Greeks? The Greeks were the white men, right? Absolutely. The Romans were the white white people, right? I couldn't hear you. Were breaking up. The the Greeks and the Romans are white people, correct? I couldn't hear you. You were breaking up. Greeks are white people. Romans are white people. All the way up till today. To the transatlantic slave trade, this had all this was white people, correct? All of who? The people who had us in captivity as the Greeks 
the people who had us in captivity is the Romans, all the way up to today to the European powers, all white people, right? Absolutely. So everything in history that's happened to us under the hands of the so-called white man doesn't outweigh the sub-Saharan slave trade. Absolutely not. We only been we only been over here for uh 300, 300 uh, plus years. Years. That's it. But I said, we're, we're not, I said the we, Greeks. On, we've been over here five hundred years. Go ahead. Right. Uh, five hundred years. We've been over five hundred years. The early, the earliest documentation of African slaves being brought to the Americas was fifteen oh three. Okay, so so then that would make that would make a Genesis prophecy of us being in the land for four hundred and thirty years false. Then. No, 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 it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. And, and, and that's, how, how, how that's a whole other topic. That's a whole other topic. But we're not going to get into it. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we can. We can. I do mean, that yeah, I mean, I mean, you can laugh about it if you want to. Um, you know, I, I don't. I don't believe you would like to discuss yeah. that though. But go ahead. Um. So when you combinate, when you combinate the Greek, the Roman, the Greek captivity, the Roman captivity, and the captivity of the Americas, that outweighs the sub. That that doesn't outweigh the sub-Saharan slave trade. Absolutely not. So Saharan slave trade was the worst slavery to black people. Hold on, and they hold are on, hold still on. they are still they are still killing, raping, robbing our people over there to this day. So Somalians are our people. It's not just Somalians in Arabia. That's why I just read Isaiah eleven eleven, showing you we're in the four corners of the earth. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. The point. The point. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, like I said, this is for the audience. I mean. Me personally, I feel like it's a slap in the face to your ancestors and forefathers who were castrated and hung <coughs> and lynched over here. And crucified. And crucified from the time of the Greeks all the way to the time of right now to say the sub-Saharan slave trade, which was maybe a few percent of actual Negroes and mostly Hamites, outweighs what happened to us <coughs> under the hands of the white man. So, but that's that's just for the audience. That's, to, opinion. Um, that's, what, that's, that's our um, opinion. That's for the audience to right. decide. Now, can we agree? Can we agree? Can we agree that that Esau is the the wicked of the earth? You say Esau the wicked of the earth? Absolutely. Esau is the wicked of the earth, right? Absolutely. That's what the Bible says. Okay. Wickedness. Um, and are they the worst of the nations? The worst of the heathen? Thus saith the Bible. Okay, perfect. Um, now I'm gonna now let's let's read some scriptures substantiating what we both what we both agree on. Um, this is Malachi one and four. Whereas Edom saith, "We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places." Thus Damn. shall the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Just substantiating that they are the wicked of the earth. They are the worst of the heathen. All right. Um, and <coughs> let's see. Uh, would you say that Alexander, them Greeks, they were, they were white people, correct? Alexander the Greek. Yep. That's why it's called a Greek. He was a Greek. Okay. So the Greek empire was white people. Well, let's see how the Bible uh, referred to them with keeping in mind how Esau, Edom, the Edomites are the wicked of the earth and the worst of the heathen. Bring that out because we're going somewhere and we're going to bring one more thing out. Then you can rebuttal. Go ahead, Ock. Okay. Um, man, it's a couple of points a lot here. Uh, if we go here, matter of fact, yeah, let's just go here. This is uh, the book of First Maccabees 3. In fact, we know this is a time where our, our forefathers were fighting against the Greeks and uh, Greek oppression. Um, for he persuaded the wicked and sought them out and burnt up those that vexed his people. Wherefore, the wicked shrunk for fear of him and all the workers of iniquity were troubled because salvation prospered in his hand. It's talking about Judah Maccabee. Now, we know that who the wicked were in that case were white people. There's no disputing that. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, this is first Maccabees. Uh, one and seven. So Alexander reigned twelve years, then died, 
and his servants bear rule every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. So when these white people came into power, evils and wickedness multiplied in the earth. Judas Maccabees called the, I do, uh, 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 the, the, the white people who he was fighting the wicked. We all agree that Malachi 1 and 4 says Esau, Edomites are the most wicked nation on the earth, the worst of the heathen. Now I want to go, now I want to ask you this before I bring this out. What, what people conquered us, destroyed us, and kicked us out of our land and, and dwelt in our land in our stead for us never to return? When did that happen? And by uh, whose uh, hand? Japan. Uh, it, it was around the Japan. 7 AD period. Okay, okay. Ro Romans, right? The Romans. Absolutely. This goes in the um goes back to Genesis nine twenty seven, where it says, "Uh, uh Japheth shall dwell in the tents of Shem." Okay. 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 okay, okay, that's good because some people don't know how to answer that. Emphatically, it was seventy A.D. where they destroyed us, killed us, pushed us out, never to return again, and then dwelt there in our stead. So I'm gonna read this in a book of Ezekiel, the seventh chapter. And I'm going to start at uh, verse, verse uh, <coughs> 21, verse 20, actually. <coughs> As for the beauty of his ornament, he said it in majesty. But they made, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein Therefore, I have set it far from them, talking about our, our sanctuary and our temples and our land, right? Now watch. And I will give it into the hands of strangers for a prey and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. Verse 22. I don't know. I'm going to skip to verse uh, 24. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen. Now, we agree that Esau is the wicked of the earth, and we agree that Esau is the worst of the heathen, right? Let me finish verse 24. And they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease and their holy places to be defiled. Now, who is this talking about? Esau, correct? Now, when did, when did the Arabs do this to us? Um, you would have to show me in that scripture where it says Esau. Did we not agree that the who who is the who is the wicked of the earth? Who is the worst of the heathen? You answered that question for me. I asked you absolutely, I asked you but this then question. then you're trying to take me to this question. Verbatim. Okay, but you're trying to take me here to this scripture where just because it says wicked, just because it says wicked in the scripture, you're trying to take me here to try to make it seem as this is talking about Esau. Once again, you have to show me talking about Esau because anybody's wicked who don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And, and and all throughout the Torah, we clearly see us being taken out of our land. But here's by the many thing: nations. it says the wicked of the earth, and then we know that Esau is called the border of wickedness. So it's not just the terminology "wicked" that's there; it's talking about the wicked of the earth, the most wicked people in the earth. Esau is the border, the archetype, the epitome of the wicked. This is why the brother is making that emphasis. right now. I asked you these questions. I asked you these questions verbatim. And you agree that it was Esau. I said, who is the wicked of the earth? You said Esau. I said, who is the worst of the heathen? You said Esau. But when I read it to you in the Bible, it's not Esau. No, what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. Just because, just what I'm saying is this. Esau is the border of wickedness. But what I'm saying is this. When we do this context according to, to wickedness or wicked, it, period. So once again, okay. show me in this scripture that this is referring to Esau. Okay. Uh, well, you know, the, the reason why is because the, the term wicked of the earth and tying down with a border of wickedness, um, you know, uh, it doesn't say verbatim Esau there. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, I know it's getting late. It's damn near midnight here. So I know it's later for you. Um, this was powerful. Uh, we appreciate you for coming on and, and we want to, we want to end and uh you know uh shalom and and a high peace and love towards you brother really appreciate you for coming on this was just I, I believe that both sides of the coin 
were, were properly and, and strongly represented and and uh, this will definitely edify the nation. Um, if you want to say any parting words, Ock, and then we, we close out with that, King. Yeah, but I just wanted to have a chance to um, answer or to, re to rebuttal against Maccabees that you ran to, you know, real quick before we end this show. I, um, and I'm going to go to First Maccabees chapter 5, verse 3. He says, Then Judas fought against the children of Esau and Idumea at Ar Ar Arabitan. Once again, they're going to the Arab there and also the locate, which is Mecca. Judas fighting against them because they besieged Gael and he gave he gave them a great overthrow and adapted their courage and took their spoils. One more scripture. Uh first Maccabees chapter six, verse one. So I'm about to show you something. So now we see Edom there, right? We have Edom there. So let me let me get this. Uh, uh, first Maccabees chapter six, verse one, he says about the time King Antiochus is traveling through the high countries, heard say that Elamius in the country of Persia was a city greatly re renowned for riches, silver and gold. And that there was there was in it very rich temple wherein were coverings of gold and breastplates and shields, which Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian king. Who, re who reigned first among the Grecians had left there, wherefore he came and sought to take the city and spoil, and not a noble because of the city having a uh, warning thereof, rose up against him in battle, so he fled and departed thence with the great heaviness and returned to Babylon. Now let's get down here to show you something, to show you that this right here, we see Judah, I mean, we see uh, uh, Judas basically hearing a beast. He's hearing about how great they are, and he's hearing about the Greeks. So right here, we clearly have a distinction between the Grecians and all the and, and also Esau. So how could Esau be the Greeks when I hear is making a complete distinction? Come on, come on. No, no. You, you, it's making a distinction, but it's also in, in, the, in these verses and in the book of Maccabees distinguishing Esau from the Arabians, though. So I mean, in, in the same instance, the same the same cases, the same cases made. So I don't you know that oh, you know that's goodness. the issue and that's and that's why oh, we just gonna have goodness. to agree to, to disagree because i mean it, it most it's deaf, talks I, about arabians coming in and in, in taking us so you know it is what it is um we can end on that um uh maybe we do this again if, if it be the grace of uh if it be the will of yah most all right deaf. Uh, uh all right shalom, shalom 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 all right shalom shalom